Good afternoon, everyone. The Sacramento City Council will please come to order. Would the clerk call the roll, please, to establish a quorum? Thank you, Councilmember Kaplan. Here. Councilmember Talamantes. Here. Councilmember Valenzuela. Here. Councilmember Maple. Here. Councilmember Jennings. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Vang. I'm here. Vice Mayor Garrow will be absent today, and I expect Councilmember Lilloy momentarily, and Mayor Steinberg. I am here. Um, good evening. Would everyone please rise for the land acknowledgement, those who can, the land acknowledgement and the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise for the opening acknowledgements in honor of Sacramento's indigenous people and tribal lands. To the original people of this land, the Nisenan people, the Southern Maidu Valley and Plains Miwok, Patwin Winton peoples, and the people of the Wilton Rancheria, Sacramento's only federally recognized tribe. May we acknowledge and honor the native people who came before us and still walk beside us today on these ancestral lands by choosing to gather today in the active practice of acknowledgement and appreciation for Sacramento's indigenous people's history, contributions, and lives. Thank you. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me begin with an apology uh, to all of the young people and all of the uh, people in the audience for our being late. One of the things we try to teach uh, young people um, is to be punctual. <laughs> and here we are. It's 545. And so we owe you an apology. We had a long afternoon city council meeting, mostly on the housing and homeless crisis in Sacramento, and then had a very important uh, closed session. And so sometimes uh, in this business, um, it's very hard to keep on time. And yet, um, I just want you to know that uh, we're sorry. So, but here we are. And now we are looking forward to one of the highlights of the entire year for the City Council. And that is the Summer at City Hall presentations to hear about the work you're doing. And I will tell you that um, in past years, as we have heard these presentations, that um, we have heard ideas that have then been debated um, at this city council um, to consider as part of city policy. So we take what you've done and what we will hear tonight very, very seriously to all those who make the summer at City Hall happen to the great YPSI staff, to all the volunteers. I want to give a shout out to my old colleague and friend, Jay Chenier, who helped start this thing um, so many years ago. And it continues. And uh, we can't wait for this evening. And so how do we begin? Um, do we have somebody uh, making a presentation to please? Opening remarks. Opening remarks. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, good evening, Mayor Steinberg, City Council, City Manager, Madam Clerk, and Madam City Attorney. I am thrilled to be here today. My name is Sarah Musser. I'm the Recreation General Supervisor, and we are here to present to you the Summer at City Hall presentations. As you will see tonight, these students are nothing short of amazing and have all the potential in the world. And after the last five and a half weeks, not that I doubted it before, but I've never been more sure in the future of our country than I am today. <laughs> and I hope you all um, hear and appreciate all the work these um, young folks have been doing. The Summer at City Hall students come from three school districts, Sacramento City, Twin Rivers, and Natomas Unified School Districts. We have 68 students that have been working hard over the last five and a half weeks to put together these presentations, videos, and public service announcements. In addition to the city staff, we have three credentialed teachers guiding the students, all from Sac City Unified School District. Um, and we're just really lucky and fortunate to be able to be here today. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Ms. Maria, who is also city staff, and she's going to introduce and um, thank the young people who have also been supporting this program, our returning youth. All right. Good evening, everyone. Like Ms. Sarah said, I am Maria Vides Medal, and I am the Summer City Hall Program Coordinator. Basically, this is my ninth year doing this program, so 
Like she said, I'm so excited being here. Every time we get to be here, I guess, students are so excited too. They can't wait to be here. So before we start with the projects, I would like to first acknowledge a group of students that have been working tirelessly even before the program started in June. Uh, and I'm talking about the returning youth. So for who doesn't know, returning youth are a group of students that graduated from the program last year and decided to come back as a peer mentors. They have been sharing their experience in the program and guiding and supporting the staff, teachers, and students. Having said that, I would like to ask to stand up to Eva, Emmy, Jayla, Josiah, Kayleen, Malaika, Rishin, Tristan, and Jathin. Without you guys, like I have been telling you, I don't think I can explain how much uh, they help us with their support and, you know, and everything we do every single minute during the program. And I guess the students might be able to tell you more about it, uh, how much we love them and appreciate them. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. So now we're going to start our presentations. Uh, so we can have the first group come up, Da Vinci's. Good evening, Mayor Daryl Steinberg. Good evening to our city manager, Mr. Howard Chan. Good evening to our city clerk, Ms. Mindy Cuppy. And finally, good evening to all of our city council members. My name is Ava Villa Dulid. I am a rising senior at Natomas High School, and I currently reside in council member Karina Talamantes District 3. I am a returning youth and a peer mentor for the summer at City Hall program. Good evening. I am Tristan, uh, sorry. Good evening, city council members. My name is Tristan Jeffers. I am a senior at American Legion High School, and I currently reside in Katie Maples District 5. I am also a peer youth mentor and a returning youth for the summer at City Hall program, and I am here to introduce to you the Da Vinci's. Good evening. We are here to raise awareness for youth programs in Sacramento. My name is Nathan Tagap. I am a rising senior at Intercom High School. I reside in Lisa Kaplan's District 1. My name is Elaine Yang. I'm a rising junior at John F. Kennedy High School, and I reside in Council Member Katie Maples, District 5. Hello, my name is Benjamin Lee. I'm a rising sophomore for a School of Engineering and Sciences, and I reside in District 7, which is Rick Jennings District. My name is Abdul Nasheen. I'm a rising junior at Hiram Johnson High School, and I reside in Vice Mayor Eric Wyatt, District 6. My name is Anaya Flagler Glass. I'm a rising sophomore at John F. Kennedy High School, and I reside in Council Member Rick Jennings, District 7. My name is Romana Taka. I'm a rising junior at NP3 High School, and I reside in Council Member Lisa Kaplan's district. Uh, my name is Nikita. I'm a rising senior in Zindrukum High School. Uh, I reside, uh, I reside uh, uh, District 3, which is Karina Talamantes District. My name is Emiliano Titman, and I'm a rising junior at Natomas High School. I reside in Council Member Karina Talamantes, District 3. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tanvi Sagwal. I am a rising junior at Nidolmas High School. I reside in Council Members Karina Talamantes, District 3. Teens nowadays are unaware of the amazing youth programs there are in Sacramento. According to our surveys, 54% of youths have never even heard of, of these programs. These programs can really help them for their future. Teens nowadays are unaware of the next steps for their future. Our surveys say that about 63% of students don't know how to even follow their paths. <clears throat> the lack of awareness for youth programs is an important problem. Without these programs, young people have a hard time figuring out which career path they want to choose, especially nowadays when there are various areas that they can go into. Youth programs can help students choose their options, improve different life skills, and give them information about different scholarships. If students are not aware about these opportunities, and they will go on to college and fall into serious debt and become 42% more likely to drop out, 
This prevents them into getting into high paying jobs and increases their chances into falling into poverty. Sacramento Youth Division offers many programs that evolve around youth civic engagement, youth workforce development, and youth sports, fitness, and wellness. Youth civic engagements help youth to get involved in their community and local government by providing them with programs such as Sacramento City Hall and Sacramento Youth Commission. Sacramento Youth Workforce Development helps students improve their pre-employment skills. Some programs include Young Leaders of Tomorrow, Primetime Teen, and Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Youth Sports Fitness and Wellness programs promote a safe and active life assault for youth in our city. These programs teach, in, teach students important life skills such as leadership skills, collaboration skills, public speaking skills, and pre-employment skills. These are other programs that are run by the City of Sacramento. If the Council would like to expand on our campaign, these programs can be included as well. However, please keep in mind there may have been other programs and entities that were not mentioned in our presentation today. I'm going to introduce our PSA video. Our PSA is going to show two students without position and clear put away. They believe college is vast of the time sign, and they answer what they want to do in the future. Congrats on graduating. You too, man. So what are your plans after high school? Probably going to start working. No college for me. What? Why not? First of all, it's way too stressful. I have no money, no scholarship. I don't even know what I want to be. Why would I waste time for college? Yeah, you're right. I'm probably just going to work just like you did. Yeah, college is a waste of money anyway. Yeah. Hey, what are you guys talking about? Oh, hey, we were just talking about what we were going to do after high school. Oh, uh, cool. So we'll make it really quick. Oh, we're not going to college. Wait, what? Why? It's way too expensive. And we don't even know what we want to be. It's just a waste of time, to be honest. Uh, I think we could uh, help you guys figure that out. Really? How? Yeah, there's a lot of programs in that city that help students with their craft. Wait, what programs? Uh, there are programs such as. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, those programs really make our futures better. Yeah, for sure. That sounds good. Bye. See you guys. All right, see ya. See ya. And this is our call to action. Enjoy, please. You want this? Well, you're gonna need a good paying job. Did you know that about 70% of high schoolers don't know what they're gonna do after school? Ah! <laughs> Explore your passion with, with the Da Vinci's! This is our billboard created by me and Emiliano. We hope that our billboard could help raise awareness as well as spread the word about the amazing programs in our community. The bold text was created to capture the eye as well as the catalog that represents the many job opportunities we have. This is our informational flyer that contains information about different youth programs throughout Sacramento. The QR code will take you to the City of Sacramento website and provides you more information on these youth programs. We plan on putting these flyers up in public areas where young adults normally hang around, like libraries, parks, schools. Our proposal for the council members are to post up our informational flyer about youth programs, putting up our billboard to encourage students to find their interest, and using social media as a platform to, in, to introduce them to existing youth programs. According to the latest survey, the college graduation rates are one-third of high school graduation rates. Many students don't know how to pursue their career, but there are many youth programs in Sacramento that help students to explore their career. Although there is a lack of awareness about these programs, we, Da Vinci's, want to help our peers by letting them know about these programs through various, uh, various platforms, such as social media, billboards, flyers, etc. That will help our uh, students to have a better future. 
In conclusion, the Da Vinci Crew believe that this program could create a path for a successful future by empowering you to discover your passion. This was our presentation, and we'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to address you today regarding the surprising issue of lack of awareness for youth program in our city. We welcome any questions, comments, concerns you may have on this topic. Thank you. Do we have questions um, from members of the council? We do. We have a few. Mayor Pro Tem Vang. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm really excited because this is the first time that I'm able to actually communicate with our summer at City Hall students in the uh, on the dais because I think last time we did it virtually for the past two years, and so this is really awesome. At first, I just wanted to say. Uh, Great job to the entire team, to the Da Vinci. Y'all did such an amazing job by really sharing what the issue is, which is the lack of awareness of young uh, youth programming already happening throughout the city. Not just the programs that the city uh, is currently operating, but just uh, programs throughout the city. Um, really love that you all recognize the issue, highlighting kind of like 70% of high school students aren't sure what they're going to do afterwards, and then also sharing what the benefits are uh, in terms of the program that you are all offering. Uh, love your PSA. Um, 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 and really love your call to action as well. Um, love the QR code as well, um, and I think it's something that I have seen after, I think, last year's presentation. We started using QR codes as a city as well, and so I really just want to say great job, love the presentation, um, and also the ideas of making sure, and I think sometimes it's not rocket science, but we miss it, and it's our blind spot blind spots as adults, but like posting flyers and giving flyers out exactly where the young people are at, sometimes we don't even do that, just real talk, right? And so it's like back to basic organizing, right? Meeting young people where they're at. And so uh, just great job, really proud of all of you. Congratulations on completing almost five weeks. Um, and so yeah, great job, kudos to all of you. Thank you so much, great job guys. Council Member Kaplan. Thank you, Mayor. Congratulations, Da Vinci's. You did a really good job. Um, so this is my first time, um, while I have sat in the audience and watched before, um, watching you here at this dais, wow. Um, so yes, every single one of you can be a council member in the future, so don't give up that hope. Um, two, what is the process that we actually get all of the PDF social media flyers so that I can start posting this? And by the way, I did QR code and it works. <laughs> so I, I checked, good job, because technicality matters. Um, but what is that process? Do we actually get all of this information? Do our council offices, can it be sent to our emails? Because I'm in. I'll get to Intercom and MP3 and Natomas Charter and the library and get this posted because it is about city schools partnership, uh, and that's what this is doing. So I'll, I want to follow through. Yeah, like what do we do? Yeah. Sure, yeah, so um, we're happy to provide that material to you. I think we might wanna send it to our media team first just to double, triple check, um, but we're happy to share all the information that is provided today. Can I today. pre request it for all teams? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, but congratulations. Job well done. Um, I think uh, you would fool people if they didn't know you were high school students. So uh, really appreciate all the hard work you guys put in. Congratulations. So I want to join my colleagues in uh, congratulating you on a great job. I was really impressed with how well you worked together as a team. And I guess my question was, uh, was there any, any, during the process of delivering this, was there any kind of animosity or any kind of confusion or differences of opinion? Or did you come together as a team and knew exactly what you were going to do? Yeah, push him on up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, so on this topic, we all like discuss about it before we start on it, and then we all agree that we would like uh, do a presentation on this because we believe that this is like a major issue in our city. So it was like a all, like idea of the whole team. So I agree with you wholeheartedly that this is a major issue, and I think you came up with some incredible solutions on how to address the issue. So if seventy percent of the kids don't know what they want to do. Um, after high school, it, there's a, a great opportunity to really help a lot of students. And I just want you to know that we, as your teammates, will work with you. If you get all that information to us, we'll send it out 
to our entire network of, of constituents who have children in all the different schools, wherever they may be, and in whatever state they may be in, so that we can take your work and spread it to the multitude, so that more students, less students, or are, are, will not will go to more students will go to college, and less students will not will will have the benefit of uh, not having to be confused about what to do. Anyway, they don't know how to say it a whole lot better than what I just said. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to to congratulate each one of you on the, uh, an incredible presentation. Um, it touched me a lot because I never realized how important programs like this are. And I just want to stop for a second and thank the mentors and those who came back from last year because they deserve a round of applause, if you will. It always takes someone to give up their time in order to be a mentor and to be able to help us along the way. And I know they did a good job in doing that for each one of the groups but I just want to acknowledge them because they helped pave the way for your successful presentation. So again, congratulations. Looking forward to utilizing this to let more students know uh, a pathway to success. Thank you so much, Council Member Jennings. Next in the queue is Councilwoman Talamantes. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tembang. Uh, congratulations on completing this. So happy to see so many of you from Natomas. Makes me really, really proud. So one question is going to apply to all the teams. Give us a history of your team name, Da Vinci. How did you come up with that? Please tell us the secrets. <laughs> okay, so on the first day during orientation, we had to vote on a name, and it came down between the Annihilators and the Da Vinci's. And we didn't know each other that much, but I voted for the Annihilators. <laughs> but so we ended up going for the Da Vinci because our two um, team leaders, they voted for the Da Vinci. So we ended up being Da Vinci's at the end. So, yeah. Okay. And then I have an ask for you. So we as a city council don't have a team name. So if all the groups can come up with their desired team name for us and just pass it over to the mayor pro tem or the mayor in the future, we greatly appreciate that. <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> thank you. And great job. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Team Da Vinci. Give it up for them one more time. All right, I think this is the part where I announce the next team because the mayor gets a book that I don't get and I get the notes here. Um, I, okay, I think the next team, oh, I don't want to say the next team, but the next team, I'll have them introduce themselves. Uh, the, top is, the topic is addressing clothing waste and clothing affordability. This is team and I'll let them introduce themselves. So, I was gonna say your name, but I, I want them to introduce themselves. So come on up. Hold on real quick. Let me get my notebook. Yes, I wore tennis shoes today. Yeah. Okay. All right. The floor is all yours. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Josiah Jones. I live in Katie Maples, District 5, and I am a rising senior in Hiram Johnson High School. Good evening, Mayor Steinberg and council members. My name is Emmy Lee. I currently reside in council member Lisa Kaplan's District 1, and I am a rising senior at Intercom High School. I am a returning youth, peer mentor, and would now like to welcome our team called the Pink Posse. Good evening. My name is Bianca Koshkar. I reside in council member Katie Venezuela, District 4. Um, I am a sophomore at Ponderosa High School. Um, good evening. My name is Jamie Villas Medal. Um, I reside in um, Council Member Korean Talamantes District Three, and I am a rising sophomore at MP Three High. Evening. My name is Ow. Evening. My name is Nathaniel Sanchez. I'm from Council Member Eric Gale. I'm sophomore at Rosemont High. Good morning. My name is Madeline Cranser, and I reside in C Council Member Kaplan's District. I'm a rising junior at MP Three High School. 
Hello, my name is Lisa Ramirez, and I'm from Council Member Lisa Kaplan's district, and I'm a rising senior at Relinda High. Hello, my name is Rishi Chilmakuri, and I am also from Lisa Kaplan's district, and I'm a rising senior at Intercom High School. Hello, my name is Simmer Gill. I reside in Council Member Kaplan's district, and I'm a rising senior at NP3 High. Hello, my name is Tanjot Gargil. I also reside in Council Member Lisa Kaplan's district, and I'm also a rising senior at NP3 High. Hello, my name is Aaron Pulido. I reside in Lisa Kaplan's district, and I am a rising junior at NP3 High. Hi, my name is Xavier Lecluse. I live in Council Member Lowy's district, and, my, and I'm a rising sophomore at Maryland High School. I live in Council Member Jennings District and I'm a rising sophomore at John F. Kennedy High School. Hello, my name is Michael Lopes. I live in Lisa Kaplan District 1 and I'm a rising sophomore at Valinda High School. Once again, hello council members. We are the Pink Posse and we are extremely grateful for the opportunity to demonstrate our hard work and service to the community. For our capstone project, we are determined to fight the major yet mostly unheard of issue of clothing waste in Sacramento. In the upcoming video and presentation, you will be introduced to our vision of what the Sacramento community could be, united by our project we call the Outfit Outlet. We plan to create what is essentially a clothing swap meet, allowing all members of the community to come together and freely exchange or donate clothes. So with that in mind, let's move forward and embrace a new sense of community throughout the city of Sacramento, starting with our PSA. Hi, welcome to Alpha Outlet. Um, this is one of our new pop-up shops. Uh, we got a grand opening, so we are selling free bracelets with every free trade-in. Basically, how this works is that you bring clothing that you don't like anymore, and we give you a new outfit or a new piece. And since we have a grand opening, we are giving away a free bracelet to every person who brings you the trade-in. Um, hey, um, so I just came here. I was going to throw away this, this shirt, but like, my friend of the said to you not and to come here. Yeah, he's right. So this is a shirt that I was going to throw away. Wow. So what could I trade in this one? This is a great piece. This will do us wonders for the next person. Um, we would recommend this shirt. And I think that you really like it. And I get a free bracelet, right? Yeah, you can bring anything you want. I think this is better. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. The choice, the choice. And it's totally free, right? Yeah, totally free. And let me know like what you need next time. You can bring in your friends, anybody. Thank you. On average, an American citizen spends way too much money on clothes. For example, women spend around $350 per year on clothes, and men usually tend to spend $330, on $330 per year just for clothes. So that's not even including babies or footwear. Footwear is around $320, and baby clothes under two years old is $70. That's way too much money. That's $1,430 per year or 120 per month. That's way too much money to be spending. We could be spending on this alpha outlet. Did you know that 4% of landfills make up textile waste, which can contribute to our problems? Along with that, the mass amount of money that we are spending on purely clothing can be used in other necessities of our lives. For example, the average Californian spends around $380 just on their utility bills. And for the electricity bill, it's $130 a month. That money that we're spending on clothing could be used on this instead, but they can only get that if they participate in our clothing swap called Outfit Outlet. With that, they can spend money on their necessities that can't, that just doesn't have to be clothing while still not having to give up their clothing needs. Good evening again. I would first like to introduce you to the economic problems that is plaguing California with our clothing prices. Firstly, all of you know how expensive it is to live in California, and this is the rise of Goodwill stores is not helping. Over the recent years, since 2014, the medium average of prices have shifted by $7. That's more than a 70% increase in prices. Low-income families can't sustain on that, let alone um, just buy clothing whenever they want. Furthermore, 13% of Californian citizens, specifically in Sacramento, live in poverty based on the July 2022 census report. What this means is that the luxury of affordable clothing that is also sus like sustainable for us is slowly dwindling with no alternative in sight. 
Along with that, that's not the only problem Californian citizens, specifically in Sacramento, are facing, with the rise of clothing waste in our community being an adamant problem. Today, our community is consuming more mass-produced clothing than ever before. As a result, our landfills are being filled with mountains of textile waste. The average person throws away about 70 pounds of clothing per year, but only about 15% of all our clothing waste gets reused or recycled. Meanwhile, about 85% of all our clothing gets sent straight to landfill. And some clothing, such as cotton, can take up to months to decompose, but realistically, most clothing is made out of polyesters, which can take 200 years to decompose in our landfills. But this shouldn't even be a problem, considering that 95% of all of our textile waste can be reused or recycled. As a matter of fact, if we were to recycle 23 million tons of clothing, it would be equivalent to moving 13 million cars from our roads. To reduce the environmental impacts of clothing waste, our team recommends our solution, the Outfit Outlet. Hello, council members. Our solution to our hidden issue of waste and sustainability is our monthly pop-up shop called Outfit Outlet. The purpose is to allow citizens of Sacramento to have a place where they can swap old clothes for new clothes of equal value. Having a system that requires no money makes it more inclusive and easy for everyone to explore and find new fashion ideas. This makes it an affordable way to get new clothes and new ideas of fashion. And also um, is our motto, re, re, reduce, re, reuse, and revive clothing that could have been otherwise thrown out. Reduce in this scenario means to reduce the pollution aspect of clothes. Reuse is the center of the transaction of swapping clothes. And revive is the end process to our system of reviving clothes, the clothing life to someone new who can use it again. Thank you. Good evening, council members. Today, we stand before you to present our billboard. As we all know, clothing sustainability is a pressing issue that demands our attention, and our proposed billboard aims to both educate and promote our clothing swap events. This billboard will raise awareness, uh, encouraging our community to participate in these organized events. To further add on, this billboard is designed to capture attention and engage the public in a meaningful way. By incorporating a palette of vibrant green shade, it skillfully symbolizes the essence of trade through recycling clothes. Additionally, the billboard links allows anyone passing by, whether driving or walking, to easily access our website and get more important informa information, such as our mission statements, our slides, our video, and our flyer. We sincerely hope that this billboard reaches our community, encouraging everyone to join in on our mission to reduce, uh, reduce waste in Sacramento. Thank you. This would be one of many examples of our pop-ups flyer. The purpose of these flyers are to spread awareness and to hopefully get a stable community that will continuously come to our pop-ups. Not only does the flyer contain the type of clothes we would have, but hopefully we would be able to promote small owned food vendors to make it more of a hangout spot, especially since 62% of, of our youth go home straight after school. Not only is this a fantastic idea for more community engagement, but more than half of the youth that took our survey are already invested into that idea of the outfit outlet. On behalf of the Pink Posse, we thank you for your time and patience. We hope that you might consider implementing our solution, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to share them. Thank you so much, Team Posse. Let's give them a round of applause. All right, I have a few comments, but I will uh, hand over the mic to my colleagues. First in the queue is Councilwoman Katie Maple. Thank you, Mayor. I mean, Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> um, good. Doesn't it sound good? Um, thank you for the excellent presentation. That was wonderful. And um, I was just thinking to myself that uh, Councilmember Talamantes and I could have our own clothing swap because we borrow each other's clothes so much. <laughs> um, and I think this is a brilliant idea because it's something that's not talked about a lot, right? Like we live in a world of fast fashion uh, where people are buying clothing online. It's not, it's being shipped uh, overseas. We're using fossil fuels. It's cost as, as uh, I remember, I can't remember which um, documentary I watched, but basically it says the cost may be cheap, but we're paying the cost somewhere else down the line. And that's usually the people who are making it who are not paid a living wage. 
um, who are not able to have you know sustainable health care or not able to have a roof over their heads and so that's what we're what we're really buying when we're buying a you know ten dollar dress or something like that and so I think this is a really creative solution where we can also utilize our own community right like our own friends our family our neighbors um, I'm sure we all have pieces that that one another would like to use and I think this would be such a great idea and I'd be happy to participate in something like this and help sponsor it so I uh, just want to really thank you for all your work thanks uh, thank you councilwoman Kaplan okay so this is a little full circle um, some of you know that I was a school board member for 20 years um, and there are a couple of you I've known since you were little babies um, that are standing before me some of you your father may have worked for us at the district and some may be my neighbor's kids that I've watched grow up <laughs> um, so it's it, like I gotta tell you this is really cool to have our youth stand before us. Um, and so I noticed, because again, I checked on the QR code. Uh, it says August 5th. Are you having something August 5th? This would be a, if it got admitted into council and you really wanted to do something like this, we would be happy to establish an, a, a pop-up event like this on August 5th. But that was just a date in the future that just to show, hey, we would be really interested <laughs> and this is a very much realistic date that we could push for considering we gathered all the necessary materials. All we need is the backing and sponsorship. So um, I'm gonna have my district director stand up, Mateo. <laughs> I'm putting him on the spot. See everybody, he's waving. Um, I already told him I was putting him on the spot. And D1 and all of you on Pink Posse uh, are, you know, honorary D1. I told him uh, we got to have this. Um, we have a one youth program uh, in my district that our youth are involved in doing this, and we got to figure out how to make it done. So. Um, I would gladly have all of us council members who want to join, but um, I already told my chief of staff and, and I told Mateo was putting him on the spot. We got to figure out how to make this happen um, because, you know, most of you, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to take ownership since most of you are in my, my, my district uh, young scholars, uh, but we got to figure out how to make it happen and the timing that works, but uh, you got my buy-in. So congratulations. Yeah, they're honorary D1. <laughs> like this, I gotta be this, <laughs> this is kind of like Shark Tank. I like Shark Tank. <laughs> this, is, this is like, you guys should be on NBC. <laughs> you, you know? All I know is that the closing statement yeah, it's was like made it. by resident of thank District you. 2. So. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Councilwoman Kaplan. Uh, next we have Councilwoman Valenzuela. Thank you. Sorry, someone kept trying to unmute me and I couldn't unmute myself. Um, shout out to the first T4 person who's presented. Very excited. I love this idea. We were talking about this with um, post-COVID because we all had all these clothes that we either didn't use or maybe they didn't fit quite well anymore. And we were like, gosh, these are really nice clothes and I feel bad that they're just sitting in my closet. So this is a really cool idea. I'm curious for a question though because I know sometimes people might bring something that needs repairs or maybe it's just not really wearable. Did you all talk at all? about the sort of reuse or what you might do with that to keep it from the landfill? We did. Uh, so it would depend on the traction this first holds because, of course, like the first event that we hold of this wouldn't be just off the bat, oh, we're doing everything that we want to be. But if they need repairs, we're thinking since this is going to be a social hangout, maybe we'd have like a little workshop that people volunteers like they can just teach people how to patch up their clothing and it can be just a community I like idea like for myself I've gone into like embroidery uh, recently but of course it's like an on and off process but if I had someone guide me on it and it was just like just a whole group activity that would be really nice so something like that that's an excellent idea like how to mend clothes how to tailor things how to put buttons back on I can't tell you the number of things I've had to donate because the button breaks and I can't I'm not good with that sort of thing <laughs> but I also think it would be cool you could like remake things or do like a whole different level of classes so that's really cool that you already thought about that um, so yeah thank you so much I would love to attend the D1 event when it gets put on and help support um, so thank you for doing this this is a cool idea thank you councilwoman Valenzuela next in the queue is councilwoman Talamantes all right pink posse who's gonna give me the history of the name mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going up here because during the first 
week or first probably day that we all met, we did not know each other. Uh, of course, some of us went to some schools with one another, but it wasn't mostly, we didn't know each other. So we were just listing out random words and I was trying to just pitch it because we had like five minutes left and we still <laughs> didn't have a name. And we had like the words pink, pollution, and like, and everything. So my thing is I tried to connect it to third wave feminism because pink is usually a symbol of feminism. And I'm like, oh, we can connect that and how we're against pollution, something like that. So, and then you're like, yeah, let's go. And then I think it was Josiah, our other team leader who put on like, do you want to add posse at the end of it? And we're like, sure. Then a few weeks later, we were like, okay, pink pollution posse is one, a mouthful, and it doesn't really it doesn't really rhyme well. So we took out <laughs> pollution and it's just been the pink posse ever since and that was thanks to Aaron's idea of taking out the pollution too. So Nice. Well I think Councilmember Jennings and I could probably join the club here. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. um, incredible work and close swaps are so fun. Um and I think that people need to do it more because the facts are the facts and this is something with climate change and maybe something that we can do. Um, as a city is, is host more, more of these. Um, so reduce, reuse, and revive. I love it. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you, Councilwoman Talamantes. Councilmember Jennings. I think most of the things have been said, and the group has really applauded you on a great job that you did, and I want to join them in doing so. A couple points I wanted to make up that I thought you were right on. We spend way too much money on clothes, um, and uh, clothes waste is affecting our community. As a matter of fact, it's affecting my home because um, I don't have as many spaces in the closet because somebody else in my home <laughs> takes up more closet space than, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm not saying any names, right? There are multiple people who are in my home now, but if I had a little bit more closet space, I wouldn't have to be going into the attic to try to put my clothes. In, in the basket. So I think it's a great idea. I think I could talk my other significant party <laughs> into getting rid of some of the clothes that um, take up space in our closet. So I think this is an incredible idea, and I'm going to pitch this idea tonight when I get home. So thank you so much. <laughs> and, and did we confirm that we're going to do it on August the 5th, like their flyer said? <laughs> Oh, so that flyer that I saw, it was just a flyer. The date could change at any time. Yeah. Okay, that's good. All right. Mayor, okay. what happens when council members go at it with each other? Do you, like, tell them to stop? Because this is, like, oh, my first time. So there are severe sanctions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now you let it happen. It's good discussion. Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you so much, Councilmember Jennings, and thank you so much, Team uh, Pink Posse. I think my colleague said everything pretty much, uh, especially I want to just um, uplift and highlight the comments that Councilmember Maple made about really we are seeing like a mass production of clothing, but we know that that has led to an increase really um, – in a huge amount of waste. And so I really appreciate this team bringing that issue to light. I mean, this impacts all of us because we all wear clothes, right? We all go shopping no matter where you shop at um, and really being more conscious about the ways we shop um, and being conscious about, you know, just, you know, our purchases, right? And how our lifestyle and what we do every day that actually can contribute to climate change. And so just want to say great job. I too want to participate on the, um, that event, so let, let us know. It might just be a big city of Sacramento, like clothing swap day. Um, so yeah, so again, congratulations and great job. You should be really proud of yourself. All right, the next group that is coming up, um, and I'm not gonna announce their name because I want them to introduce themselves. Uh, the next uh, group, the next team is actually, the topic is the dangers of fentanyl. So they're going to come and speak on this really important issue. Give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, 
city manager, city clerk, city attorney, and good evening to our beloved council members. My name is Richard Mardol, and I'm a, the linker leader of the Red Dogs. I currently reside in Lisa Kaplan's District 1 and I'm a rising senior at Intercom High School. My group, the Red Dogs, will now present themselves and introduce themselves and then present the topic of the dangers of fentanyl. Thank you. I'm Tyler Marr. I reside in Council Member Lisa Kaplan's District 1, and I'm a rising senior at Intercom High School. I'm Mariah McKinley. I reside in Vice Mayor Eric Guerrero, District 6, and I'm a rising sophomore at Rosemont High. I'm Gregory Yasmin, and I reside in Council Member Rick Jennings, District 7, and I'm a rising sophomore at McClatchy High School. I'm Sabrina Merzamariki. I reside in Council Member Lisa Kaplan's District 1, and I'm a rising junior at Intercom High. My name is Bernard Lee. Uh, I now reside in Edgar uh, District 6, and I'm a rising junior at Hiram Johnson. My name is Meredith Gore. I reside closest to Council Member Sean Lowy's District 2, and I'm a rising junior at Highlands High School. My name is Raleva Ayuade. I live in Council Member Kaplan's District, and I'm a rising junior at Intercom High School. My name is Ziggy Lin. I reside in Council Member Kitty Valenzuela's District 4, and I'm a rising junior at West Campus High School. My name is Hania Freely. I reside in Council Member Lisa Kaplan's District 1, and I'm a rising sophomore at Empathy High School. Good evening, Council Members. My name is Jessica Chahal, and I reside in Council Member Lisa Kaplan's District 1, and I'm a rising senior at NP3 High School. Zero. That was my knowledge of fentanyl. Even for myself, I never had to be prescribed fentanyl, and I certainly had no awareness of the counterfeit pills primarily impacting youth. This is a quote from Laura Didier, whom we had the pleasure of interviewing. She lost her teenage son, Zach, due to fentanyl poisoning back in 2020. Here, Ms. Didier discusses her lack of knowledge towards the fentanyl crisis, which is a lack of knowledge that many people have. Good evening, everyone. Today, our group will be presenting to you why we need to take further action to educate our youth about the, the deception, lethal danger, and lack of awareness surrounding fentanyl. Our group will present the solution the conclusions we have made from the research we've conducted and solutions we believe will use, yield a safer, more educated community. Our group's PSA video focuses on the current opioid crisis. Specifically, our focus is the local issue of fentanyl use with teens. It highlights the effects that drug use can have on a person with limited knowledge of drugs. The first part features Ziki, Tyler, and Sabrina. The second part of our PSA focuses on how having the right information can change your opinion on drugs. After Brandon realizes how easy it is to lace drugs with fentanyl, he gives them back to Tyler. You all right over there? Do I look all right? My bad, just trying to help. What do you mean? Come up to school, I got you. Huh? Where? I looked everywhere for you. Here. What are these? Don't worry about it. You know where to find me if you need some more. What do you mean? they received from another student. They died from fentanyl overdose because Xanax was laced with fentanyl without them knowing. <sighs> Stay safe out there, guys. And if you are going to do drugs, please test your drugs with fentanyl test strips to make sure that you're not doing, you're not accidentally ingesting any fentanyl. Stay safe out there, guys. Peace. No, hold on, hold on. You, don't, you don't, what you gave me yesterday? You gave me Xanax just like you asked me to. No, I mean, what the, you know what the pills you gave me yesterday? What are you talking about? Uh, I'm talking about fentanyl. Like, it's, I saw it on a TikTok. It's apparently, it's like a very dangerous drug that can be laced in Xanax and every, any other drug. As a matter of fact, I still, I researched some stuff that can help. Let's just stay. Oh yeah, like what? 
like setting myself some realistic goals, reaching out to the people I love, going to my family members, it's only about what's going on. If you think little thing that, things like that are gonna change your mental state, then go ahead, I'm out. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, so in Sacramento, fentanyl is a growing concern. In 2021, our county has lost 116 people due to fentanyl, fentanyl poisoning. Poisoning differs from an overdose, as poisoning is the unknown consumption of fentanyl. Across the world, but very notably in Sacramento, traces of fentanyl have been identified in most street drugs like cocaine, meth, heroin, Xanax, Oxy, Percocet, Adderall, marijuana, and vape pens. In fact, 98% of street pills tested by the One Pill Can Kill organization were found to be fake. Of those, 98% contain fentanyl. Traces of fentanyl alone can have the potential of death. Just between 2021 and 2022, our county saw a 133% increase in cases related to fentanyl. This information is incredibly significant in understanding how this issue stems from a lack of education and deception that surrounds this topic. Victims of fentanyl poisoning tend to be completely unaware of the risk of fentanyl poisoning and the possibility of the presence of fentanyl in their drugs. Our group conducted a survey to gauge our community's understanding of fentanyl. We sent an anonymous survey to members of our community, along with posting it on social media. Of the 203 respondents, 25% of them said that they have used drugs before, and 10% of the 203 respondents said that they have used fentanyl before. Along with this, we found that 20% of the 203 responders know someone who has died from a fentanyl-related overdose. Our billboard showcases the deceiving nature of fentanyl pills. By comparing pills, we are demonstrating how an average individual couldn't, won't be able to tell if the pill contains fentanyl or not, which emphasizes the importance of properly educating our youth and raising awareness. Our flyer is a call to action that includes more data for people to see. One possible solution to the local fentanyl crisis here in Sacramento is for our city council, you, to partner with our school districts to make sure that all of our high schools are having presentations on the dangers of fentanyl. In our group, we have 10 members and we attend seven different schools. Out of those seven different schools, only three of our schools have had a presentation on the dangers of fentanyl. Now, three out of seven is not a bad number, but we can do better. The, those of us who, had not, who had, did not have these presentations at their schools were completely unaware of the risks associated with fentanyl, the aspect of deception, or the, the fact that this is an issue in our very own community impacting children that are our age. Now, we must emphasize that our group chose this topic because of the unawareness we saw within our group, because of those of us who had no idea, because we want, to, uh, we want our community and our youth especially to be educated so no one can fall um, to the deception with these drugs. Organizations like One Pill Can Kill and Song for Charlie already exist. They're already local and they already present at schools. But they present at schools per the request of a school, which is why we're asking you to step in and take an initiative as some schools are not aware of why these presentations are so important. But I hope now you understand why it is. Additionally, partnerships with community uh, centers and neighborhood associations could also be implemented in Sacramento in order to reach a larger audience. Flyers can be provided by the city and posted within these centers or mailed to members in order to ensure each member receives the information. Presentations could also be held similarly to schools with free food or prizes in order to incentivize people of all ages to learn about the dangers of fentanyl. With that being said, thank you for your time and your attention. If you have any questions about our presentation, feel free to ask us. We hope we manage to impact your thinking on fentanyl and its effects on our beloved community. Thank you so much, uh, Team Red, Red Dogs. Really, really appreciate it. I have some comments, but I will um, uh, queue up the council members that's in the queue right now. So first I have is Councilwoman Valenzuela. 
Wow, um, what a powerful topic to pick. Um, I'm sure you had lots of ideas that would have been a lot more enjoyable to work on, and so I just wanna recognize you picking this topic as being really important and clearly demonstrating your passion for the issue and how important it is for you and your schools and your classmates to understand the threat here. It's been terrifying for all of us to see the numbers and to realize just how quickly this is spreading and impacting our communities and constituents, and so I really applaud you for digging in and even getting the survey numbers, I mean, you 168, is that what I saw, or 106? I mean, that's a lot of surveys to get in a very short amount of time, and you clearly designed it well, because if you had 20, 25, I forget the exact number, saying, yes, I've used, you know, drugs before, I mean, that they trusted the instrument, they trusted who they got it from, and that really says a lot of how you designed this and how you approached the project. Um, I will say that I believe we have at least one school board member who works at City Hall, Mayor Steinberg, uh, who might be the president of Sac City Unified School Board. Um, and so maybe we can help immediately follow up in terms of getting the presentations in the schools. Because you're right, this is simply a matter of connecting the dots. The organizations exist. We just need to get them to the schools so that your peers can understand and really recognize that just because you had that pill before and it was fine doesn't mean that the next pill is fine. And you really have resources to get help if you need it. Um, that's just so important. You can really save lives um, with this. So I just want to commend you for taking on a really tough and very timely topic and yeah mr mayor no pressure but i think no, we no, can no. Get this at least in the sac city unified schools <laughs> no my it's a great suggestion i mean so chinua roads is the mayor's um is the director of the mayor's office of civic engagement but he's also an elected official in his own right the chair of the of the sacramento city unified school board so i think it's a great suggestion um we'll loop him in here to make sure that uh, we strategize together, you, the city, the school district, about how we can spread this message far and wide. And we also ought to think, you know, about all of our social media outlets. Every every communication tool we have at our disposal, we should add that to the conversation around how we can help you get the word out. Thank you. We'll do it. Thank you, Mayor. Councilwoman Kaplan. Kind of like a proud mom moment. Um, yesterday I snuck down and I watched you guys present in the back of, of chambers yesterday. So job well done, because I saw this yesterday. But it's also a proud mom moment, because uh, I know many of you attend Natomas Unified schools and in our boundaries. And Natomas Unified has actually adopted this as a policy and implemented it at every single one of our high schools. So whether you go to Intercom, Natomas High, MP3, or Natomas Charter, you have received an awareness um, on this. Natomas Unified also has adopted that there is Narcan and has our staff have been trained at every single one of our schools. Um, our intercom students, I talked to Principal Pitts. Uh, the students raised awareness on fentanyl dangers themselves. Uh, we also had a Natomas Unified podcast, so I'm making it easy for Chinois Roads to, uh, <laughs> no, no pride of, of stealing. Uh, we, we've done the work, please steal away. But um, also, MP3, I know, partnered with Omni Drug Awareness Training last year, and they trained every single one of their 7th, 8th, ninth graders, and most of their 10th through 12th graders. So this is kind of a, a proud mom where you see that the city um, and the schools can work together. And truly, honestly, I know my staff, I can't say my staff, my former staff at Natomas Unified will happily make sure that we get this information to Sac City and Twin Rivers because this affects so many. And, it, and I'm, I am very appreciative of MP3 taking this down to our middle schools because it really isn't. You guys know, you know friends that tried drugs in middle school. It's, it's educating and getting that out there. So um, I so appreciate this flyer again, want copies of it digitally so that we can get that out. Um, and if anybody needs anything from what we did in Natomas Unified, I am happy to hand that out. But job well done, everyone, job well done. Thank you so much, Councilwoman Kaplan. Councilmember Jennings. Thank you, uh, great job. I wanna build on um, what my colleagues have said as far as getting the word out. Uh, Shinwa Roads is one with Sac City Unified School District, and we have a uh, former council member, ca colleague, board member at Sac at North Natomas Unified School District, Lisa Kaplan. But we also know others at Twin Rivers and Elk Grove 
and others in the region as well. So I, I'd like to take your, your flyer and take your video and see if we can make that regional wide and get it through the whole region because this is such an important subject. To lose a, a, a loved one because of lack of knowledge is the hardest thing that a parent could go through or a family could go through. And so the quicker we can get the word out to everyone, the more lives we can save. So my commitment to each one of you is that we will do everything we can to take this throughout the entire region. Okay? Good deal. Thank you, Councilmember Jennings. Councilmember Maple. Thank you very much. Um, I would just say when I was, uh, when I was in high school, um, I had a classmate pass away from an overdose. And at that time, it was pretty unheard of. Uh, it was not something that was common, and I won't say how many years have passed since I was in high school, but um, it seems now that it's a much more common occurrence where if it's not, you know, obviously not people passing away necessarily, but we're hearing of our classmates um, having experiences with drugs and um, maybe even um, having overdoses, and luckily we have things like Narcan now that are more readily available, but, um, you know, I just think about how this can really impact people's lives, and it is a really important topic that you picked, even though it's not, a, not necessarily one that's fun and that people get to uh, laugh about. I think it's one of the most important things that we're facing right now as a community, so I appreciate you doing it. And if you can, can you go back to the slide where your billboard is? Yeah, I just want to say this is incredibly well done. Like, this is something that I, I would expect if I was driving down the street and I saw this, I would have thought that this was something that a marketing firm was paid a lot of money to make. It's really well done. Um, and it makes me think, I believe our district attorney's office um, has several programs related to fentanyl and um, trying to spread awareness. I almost wonder if we should make them aware of this wonderful, um, these wonderful flyers and the billboard that you've designed and see if that's something that they might be interested in using because um, you know this is, this is a really important issue and this is amazing. So I don't, I don't know who is the brainchild of this or if it was a, a truly a team effort, but you might want to consider going into, yeah, you should consider going into marketing. I think you'd be excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Maple. Council Member Lololi. Thank you. Um, great, great presentation. Um, and uh, I, I completely agree with you, Council Member. Um, the, the billboard, professionally done. And if the district attorney is going to take this, I suggest that you copyright it immediately <laughs> so you can charge your uh, proper fees. But um, great topic. It's a very important topic. Um, there was a statement made uh, that said, if you're going to do drugs, test them. I think this day and age, let's face it, the drugs have completely changed and evolved. They're not homemade. They're all made overseas. They get trafficked right into our um, cities and our schools. There is no, no one that's not an MD that doesn't have a white you know, doctor's coat on can really come and help you and prescribe you a medication. I know we have friends. Here you go, I'm down. I'm, I'm not feeling good. Oh, I'm, I, I need to stay up. I'm going to fail my grade. And I said, well, I have something for you. Well, unless they're MD and they've completed that complete medical school and they've been practicing, they don't have anything for you. They think they have something for you. And that's the biggest problem that we have. But um, again, my, I take my hat off to you guys. A great presentation, key topic. And hopefully not only based on your research, you've picked up a lot. But I'm hoping that you can also share what you've learned with your classmates, with teachers, you know, teachers, principals, you know, the admin office. But a job well done. Thank you so much for that presentation. Thank you, Councilmember Lololi. Councilmember Talamantes. Good job on the presentation. Like my colleague said, you can copyright that, make sure nobody else takes your good flyers and all the information you presented. Um, you also have trustee uh, Rebecca Sandoval from Twin Rivers um, in the audience. So she got to hear your present. I think she's somewhere over here. I don't know, Rebecca. Wave your hand. Um, oh, oh, there she is. She's waving her hand. So you have another trustee here that was able to hear your presentation. I'm sure it's something that she would love to connect with you about. Um, and same question to you. What, how did you come up with your team name? 
Um, so similar to the other groups, we were all really uh, nervous meeting each other for the first time. And so Richard was like, okay guys, just at least come up with one word and then we'll vote on it. So um, I had a red pin, so I just wrote down red. And then Jessica, she's like, well, I like dogs. <laughs> so we wrote down dogs. <laughs> And then we just made it one. And then um, another former group member, they like came up with another um, team name. And then Richmond was like, okay, let's just vote. Because he really didn't like red dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and we all voted for red dogs anyways. So, yeah. I love it. Well, great name and congratulations on your great work. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Talamantes. I also, too, just want to echo to Team Red Dogs. Uh, great job on a really important um, presentation. And uh, thank you so much for selecting such an important topic, uh, especially discussing the ways in which it impacts young people here in the county and our city. Um, I think uh, we heard loud and clear from all of you and from the presentation that, you know, young people are suffering, right? And um, they're looking for coping mechanisms mechanisms and ways to cope and oftentimes they turn to harmful drugs and so really appreciate you all shining light on this issue. Um, I also echo I think the partnership with our schools um, is really really important really glad that Natomas is already uh, leading the way on that and um, making sure that we connect with our school board members in the other district uh, in the city um, our city boundaries to make sure that they're doing the education component as well but something I, I, I want to highlight and say great job on was really the survey response um, when I took a look at that, when you had your presentation, I think you had 203 respondents in the short time. Councilmember Valance will have mentioned this as well, but you know, we do city survey and sometimes we don't even get that many respondents. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just want to say great job because you utilized your network, um, talking to other young people and getting them to complete the survey. You should be really, really proud of yourself. Um, and that's really important data. That's uh, youth voices and what they're sharing, what's happening on the ground. And so I want to highlight uh, the great work and especially that survey. Um, great job and I'm really proud of all of you. Great job, everyone. Thank you. All right, our next amazing team, I can't name them because they're going to come up here and introduce themselves. Uh, but the next topic is on homelessness and job accessibility. Hello, okay. Greetings, Mr. Mayor, Mr. City Manager, Ms. City Clerk, City Attorney, and esteemed City Council. Okay. My name is Kayleen Wynn, and I'm an incoming freshman at UC Berkeley, currently residing in District 7. As the peer mentor and returning youth for my team, I'd like to introduce the Dreamers. My name is Ahana Iyer. I'm a rising senior at Intercom High School, and I reside in District 1. My name is Arjun Singh. I'm a rising junior at NP3 High School, and I reside in District 1. My name is Chastity Staples. I'm a rising sophomore at MP3 High, and I reside in District 1. My name is Deanna Ng. I'm a rising senior at West Campus High School, and I reside in District 7. My name is Elizabeth Denton. I'm a rising senior at CK McClatchy High School, and I reside in District 7. Good evening. My name is Gregory Walls. I'm a rising sophomore at MP3 High, and I reside in District 8. Good evening. My name is Jordan Liu. I'm a rising junior at West Campus High School, and I reside in District 8. Let's go! My name is Kylie Sue, and I am a rising sophomore at West Campus High School. I reside in District 6. Hi, my name is Marisela Garanyato. I'm a rising sophomore at West Campus High School, and I reside in District 6. Hello, my name is Momna Sim, and I'm a currently senior at Natomas High School, and I reside in District 3. Hi, my name is Shai Brene. I'm a rising junior at Luther Braybank High School, and I, and I'm a, and I live in District 3. Hi, I'm a senior at, uh, I'm Valentino Gomez. I'm a senior at Thomas High School, and I live in District 3. Good evening. My name is, Ex good evening. My name is Xavier Wilson. I reside in District 8, and I'm a rising senior at Sheldon High School. Our topic today is homelessness and job accessibility, and more specifically, our goal is to connect the homeless population to pre-existing workforce development programs and in Sacramento. On, on another note, there are city officials and citizens of Sacramento that are actively fighting against this issue of the homeless population and jobs. And as a student and my fellow peers, we want to see changes in all of our communities, council members, and the city of Sacramento, Joe Steinberg. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings against council. My name is Arjun Singh, and I'll be talking about our billboard. 
As you can see, the background image portrays a meaningful handshake symbolizing the act of hiring someone who may be homeless. Our slogan, Inspire to Hire, aims to encourage businesses to hire those who may be unhoused. Additionally, to avoid confusion, our sub-slogan, Connecting the Unhoused to Accessible Job Opportunities, provides support to our billboard's purpose. At the top right, we added a QR code from the Employment and Development Department of the State of California, which offers resources, job search tools, and aid for those seeking employment within the state. Furthermore, we included a QR code as we intended to put our billboard on benches and bus stops and areas where it's more accessible for those who do not have a stable environment to drive on roads or freeways. To conclude, our billboard aims to provide job opportunities for those who may be unhoused, granting them a chance to rebuild their lives through employment. Simultaneously, it seeks to motivate individuals seeking home, um, sorry, experiencing homelessness to pursue job opportunities actively. Our flyer is a simple design with the same QR code as was on the billboard and our sub-slogan to effectively and clearly communicate our goal. Hello once again. Um, I'm Jordan Liu and I'm here to prepare our PSA. Our PSA focuses on the different solutions to connect the unhoused to the problem of employment. By connecting the unhoused people to various resources in Sacramento, it creates more opportunities to provide aid for the unhoused and to lower the rising population. This is a significant issue, particularly in Sacramento. Sacramento is the sixth largest homeless population in the United States, at around 10,000 people. This count has tripled since the previous count in 2017. And this can be attributed to rising housing costs, which have risen due to increasing inflation. One of the main causes of homelessness is unemployment. Research shows that only 40% of the unhoused are employed full or part-time, and that the unhoused are disproportionately impacted by lack of steady income. Sacramento contains multiple development programs. These include SEDA, Sacramento Steps Forward. SEDA stands for Sacramento Employment Agency, and over for 40 years, it has funded the community and effectively connected people to jobs. Sacramento Steps Forward is another program which helps individuals and families access housing, employment, health, and education. The Dreamers Team's solution is to connect the unhoused population to the plethora of already existing workforce development programs in Sacramento. We plan to do this by promoting a singular workforce development platform through both the city and the county in a similar manner to LA Rise, a successful workforce development program promoted in the city of Los Angeles. By focusing on a singular platform, we eliminate the confusion that surrounds the multitude of programs created to assist the unhoused and all resources are concentrated in a singular area. In the end, homelessness is an issue that impacts everyone. We believe that making access to uh, opportunities easier for everyone will improve the overall quality of life in Sacramento. And providing the unhoused with access to unemployment is a big step forward in the right direction. Homelessness is a significant issue. For some context, it's extremely important to understand that homelessness is one of Sacramento's most pressing issues. I'm sure I don't need to explain this to the council, given that the previous meeting was about the unhoused crisis, and I'm sure that there will be many more meetings about the housing crisis, so I will gloss over pedantics. Previous programs implemented in Los Angeles County, another Californian city with a prolific unhoused population, show that workforce development programs are effective in dealing with the issue of housing, since they attempt to solve the problem at the source and focus on long-term solutions instead of short-term housing. One of these programs is LA Rise, which unites the city and the county of Los Angeles in order to promote employment among the unhoused. The program resulted in over 5,550 participants securing permanent housing and over 7,760 participants securing subsidized employment. This program has effectively provided a stable income to participants and encouraged those previously unhoused to seek work. Sacramento is also home to a plethora of similar programs as outlined in our recommendation. These include SRCEH, SEDA, and Salvation Army. Our plan revolves around connecting the in-house to these already existing programs. One of the main reasons that LA Rise was successful was that it was widely promoted by both the city and the county, and the message was effectively communicated, which is why we are asking for the council members' support in this issue. One possible solution we think is community information exchange. A community information exchange is a, is a network of collaborative partners using a multi-directional technology platform to connect people to this service and support they need. 
A community information exchange provides the community with insight into border trends, building a system that can proactively address and meet needs and barriers, as well as disparities in access to service. This network provides core infrastructure and methods for active planning and collaborate across organizations that provide them with health and education. This network provides communications and workflows among distributed care teams and eligibility enrollment in different services and programs. In conclusion, we the Dreamers believe that homelessness is one of Sacramento's most prevalent issues. And we think if we make job accessibility more accessible to the home unhoused, it would make their life way easier. Thank you. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns? Thank you so much, Dreamers. Do my colleagues have any questions, any thoughts on this topic? Councilmember Kaplan, I think Mayor, you have to punch the. the oh, key. I have to yep. punch, right? Okay. There you go, <laughs> Councilmember Kaplan. Thank you, uh, Mayor uh, My Vang. I think it should be said tonight, since you're sitting in the seat. Yes. <laughs> well, and you said you were retiring, so you know. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, see, we we still have fun up here, but I really want to thank you guys for diving into an important topic. You know, um, homelessness has existed since the beginning of time, which many of you have heard me say, but it doesn't mean that we can't do better or try and find a solution. And I don't think there is one solution. There are many solutions that um, I was actually going to punt back to your lap, Mayor Steinberg, as can this be part of our discussion um, that we are going to have? Uh, what are we doing on connecting our unhoused to um, job opportunities. I think it would be great uh, if we are doing it to hear back and get feedback uh, from Sacramento Steps Forward, um, SETA and others, what is happening and is there anything as we discuss this that we can do better. So thank you for reminding and doing the work. Um, I'm really proud of you guys diving in uh, for this important topic. Um, so keep it up and your voice is important. Thank you, Councilmember Kaplan. Councilmember Talamantes. Same question as all the other teams. Tell us your team name history. OK, so as a lot of the other groups said, we didn't know each other at first. And when we went to a link up with our crew leader, um, Kayleen, she was like, we need a group name. And so we all put down certain names. I actually suggested Dreamers. And then it was a competition between that and the Kings for the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then look, we all voted. It got down to those two, and then Dreamers ended up winning. Love it. Well, I think it's a great name and great presentation. All right. Mayor, oh, I was going to say Mayor Pro Tem My Vane, but Mayor Daryl Steinberg. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just curious if you have um, done any assessment of uh, any of the work programs in Sacramento. Um, and whether or not, I do know of some connections that our program providers make um, between our unsheltered population and employment, whether or not you've looked at any of them and whether we might build off something that already exists. So I was only able to take a cursory glance at like a bunch of different programs, um, but I'm pretty sure the one that um, I looked at the most closely was SRCEH, which I think stands for Sacramento Regional Coalition to End Homelessness. Um, and I think this program is really powerful because it accounts for a lot of the external factors that do affect the unhoused. Um, I'm pretty sure the statistics is around two thirds of the unhoused population are affected by both drug abuse and mental health issues. Um, and this program does account um, for support for these people so that it can seek work and find employment. So I think um, more specifically, the specific workforce development program is actually less important. And I think it's actually, we should prioritize being able to coalesce these multitude of workforce development programs and kind of have one well-funded platform so that all of the unhoused population has a single place to go. Because I do think that, because I showed around what, seven or eight workforce development programs, um, just the sheer number can lead to some confusion. Um, so yeah, this is why I asked for both city and county funding as well. We just think that, you know, 
promoting a single a singular platform would really assist yes. the cause. I really want to thank you for highlighting a really uh, important and sometimes forgotten part of the homeless challenge. Yeah. And that is that, um, well, first of all, there are a lot of working people that find themselves living mm -hmm. in their cars. I mean, that's one of the great tragedies of the economic crisis that we face and the unsheltered crisis that we face. But for people who are chronically homeless, the idea of infusing work um, as they are able, depending upon their whatever health-related or disability-related issues they may be living with, is really very powerful because work is dignity, making money to be able to afford, uh, you know, to start taking care in some ways uh, of your, your needs um, is part of recovery for people who are, who are in recovery. And so it's just it's really important, and uh, we don't talk enough about it as we deal with the emergencies around shelter and around safe ground and, and making sure that people are just safe and that the community is safe. But it's more than that. It's about helping people recover, and recovery includes work. Thank you. Thank you, Dreamers. I just have a few comments. Uh, really just want to say thank you so much for highlighting a really important issue that we often discuss here at City, at City Hall. And so I know our last conversation was about this. And then next week, we're going to have a very intense conversation. So inviting all of you to tune in and maybe even make a pu public comment on the mayor's proposal that he's bringing to council next week. Um, but I just want to highlight something that all of you um, mentioned in your presentation about making sure we streamline service in the program. That's so key because um, right now I think many of us understand, and we've heard from our unhoused residents, that um, it's so hard for them to navigate the system that we have now, right? The system is set up in a way uh, that's kind, that's, um, that can really serve um, our residents that are experiencing homelessness. So really appreciate you really talking about the need for the workforce piece, but that making sure that there's a, a singular platform for that. Um, and then I, I also just want to say I really love the campaign, Inspire to Hire. Um, Councilmember Garrett is not here today, but both him and I sit on the board of SETA. Um, and I really love the idea of this, um, the, the slogan, um, and definitely is going to pitch it to SETA, because I know that for District 8, we have our annual job fair as well. Um, and maybe if my staff is listening to this meeting, we might just actually take that title, Inspire to Hire. Uh, for our next job fair, our next our next district council member Jenny is like, y'all need to ask her for some money. Um, but I will I will cite that. I will cite literally on a flyer, Team Dreamers. Um, but would love to use that as because we have an annual um, a job fair. Uh, in our district and would love to use that um, as a theme for this year. And so again, just great job. Really proud of you and congratulations on a, a well done presentation. Great job. All right, we got two more teams to go. The next topic is about human trafficking, safety prevention, and identifiers. Good evening, Mayor, City Clerk, and City Manager and Council. My name is Jayla Brown. I am a senior at John F. Kennedy High School, and I reside in Council Member Rick Jennings' district. Um, I'm a peer mentor for our group, the Cali Kids, and this is my co-peer mentor, Malika. Um, hello, my name is Malika Mahmoud. I am an incoming freshman at UC Merced, and I reside in District 3. Before I pass the mic to my students, I would like to acknowledge one student that couldn't stand up, stand up with us today. Um, they put a lot of effort into the thing, and I really want to recognize them. Now for my students. Hello, my name is Hadi Ahmed, and I'm a rising senior at NP3 High School. Um, I reside in Council Member Lisa Kaplan's District 1. Hello, my name is Aliyah Simmons. I am a rising junior at John F. Kennedy High School, and I reside in Rick Jennings, District 7. Hello, my name is Sophia Ortega. I am an incoming junior at West Campus High School, and I reside in Katie Valenzuela's District 4. Hello, my name is Farah Avender, representing Vice Mayor Guerra's District 6. I'm an upcoming senior going to attend West Campus High School. 
Uh, hello, my name is Waylon Chu. I'm a rising junior at MP3 High School, and I live in K uh, Councilwoman Talamantes' District 3. Hello, my name is Liliana De La Rosa. I am an upcoming junior at West Campus High School, and I live in um, Vice Mayor Eric Guerra's District 6. Hi, I'm Rebecca McPhee. I'm a rising senior at John F. Kennedy High School, and I live in Council Member Rick Jennings, District 7. Good evening, council members. My name is Shidari Nietzsche. I am an upcoming senior at Intercom High School. I live in council member Cobson's District 1. My name is Wishma Faisal. I'm an upcoming junior at NP3 High, and I reside in Lisa Kaplan's District 1. Good evening, council. My name is Ayande Fletcher. I'm an upcoming sophomore at Westlake Charter High School, and I reside in Lisa Kaplan's District 1. Human trafficking is a dark and disturbing reality that is occurring right here in Sacramento. It's an extremely complicated yet inadequately discussed topic. Human trafficking is a huge problem in Sacramento, yet there's minimal awareness being spread about this issue. As adolescents, it can be very difficult to bring change on such a large topic, but this is a challenge that we are willing to take on. It's time to shed light on this issue and take action to protect our community. Imagine the fear and hopelessness that victims of human trafficking experience every day. I would like everyone in this room to just realize that this could be your loved one. Let's explore the shocking truth about human trafficking in Sacramento and what we can do to make a difference. Human trafficking has been a major issue in our society since the 1900s. Since then, the number of ca cases have drastically increased. From 2011 to 2019, there has been an 84% increase in human trafficking cases. Then from 2020 to now, there has only been a 10% decrease. A lot of these cases happening here in Sacramento, a human trafficking hotspot. This proves that human trafficking has become a common occurrence with a total of 900 to 1,200 victims of trafficking per year since 2020. For our PSA video, we want to spread awareness of the different methods human trafficking could have and how people should be aware of their surroundings. Without further ado, here's our PSA video. The new guy Sophia's talking to? Sophia's talking to a new guy? Yeah, she met him online like two months ago. Do you know what he looks like? I don't know what he looks like. I don't think she knows what he looks like either. So you don't have a pic or anything? No. Are they gonna meet up or anything? Yeah, they're meeting tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Do you know where? Um, at a park nearby. She didn't really tell me much, but really? you should check in with her. That's she's doing so it. sketchy. Yeah. Okay, I'll text her. In an interview I had with one of Sacramento's human trafficking detectives, Christina Trujillo, we were informed that only 20 to 30 human trafficking cases are investigated per year. She says that the negative stigma of reporting to police of illegal acts such as involvement in prostitution or pimping limits law enforcement's ability to combat predators and other exploitative actions. Existing precautions for areas most affected by human trafficking include bring, bringing a heavier police presence to an area and providing resources for those most affected. The lack of awareness surrounding safety measures to avoid being trafficked is the cause for the continuation of this issue. Another interview that we conduct, uh, that our team conducted was with Vice Mayor Guerra. And in this interview, we found that many in Sacramento don't realize how pressing of an issue that human trafficking is. We also found that the majority who are trafficked in Sacramento were Latinx who are held hostage by the coyotes, or smugglers, that smuggle them into the United States. To collect evidence, we decided to create a Google Forms survey to 
data about what people typically know about human trafficking. Our goal for the survey was to collect evidence whether people understand the, what human trafficking is and what science they should look out for. The goal of our presentation is to steer public funding towards spreading more in-depth knowledge about human trafficking. While many may have heard about the situation, there's still a concerning lack of knowledge regarding proper prevention and identifying trafficking signs. By educating the general public about this issue through various forms of public awareness campaigns, we can be better prepared to address this situation and contribute to mitigating the scope of human trafficking overall. This is our billboard. This is how we intend to advocate for more awareness surrounding human trafficking. By displaying this billboard reading, traffic is for cars, not people, and human trafficking. With, with resources such as the Human Trafficking Hotline and the website as well. Our media aspect of this project includes a poster that informs the reader about human trafficking and provides a hotline that they should call to report a situation that involves trafficking or to access the resources that, for those who need them. The purpose of this flyer is to spread information and draw attention to human trafficking. Council, we the Cali kids have heard about human trafficking far too much on the news and from word of mouth. It is shameful that our city is a human trafficking hotspot and we would like to do whatever it takes to end that. We hope that our billboard, PSA, and call to action allows other teenagers like us to learn information about human trafficking, what a trafficker could look like, what to do if you witness someone being trafficked, and how to gain more information. As young teenagers, specifically of color, we know that we are the primary people that are being trafficked. We appreciate the time that you have given us to spread our information so that others can stop being trafficked and so that we can make a change in our city because we are City of Sacramento citizens. We appreciate you all so much. We open it now for questions. Thank you so much, Team Cali Kids. Uh, first in the queue is Council Member Lololi. Thank you. Um, again, great presentation. And a, again, a very powerful topic. Um, you're right. I, I don't think we give it enough attention. You know, when we talk about um, illegal drugs, um, I think, you know, even on this panel, we know somebody that's doing drugs or we've seen movies and what have you that, that those things take place. But human trafficking is something that still, you know, it hasn't really hit the main, the, 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 uh, main media yet. Um, I just recently saw a movie by the name of um, Sound of Freedom. Uh, it's based on a true story. What a powerful, powerful movie. And walking out of the movie theater, I, I was just in shock. I was shaking because I'm a father of two. And the video that you made was also very, very powerful on how by simply approaching someone and saying hello, there could be somebody right behind you waiting to kidnap you, more or less. So great presentation. Uh, thank you very much for bringing awareness to this. Um, I think, again, it's a topic that we're not really focused on because it's not, it's not being talked about as much as it should be. But I can tell you that um, human trafficking, uh, it's a $150 billion industry in our country, not worldwide. This is just in U.S. So it, it's really big. And, again, thank you so much for the presentation. Very powerful. Thank you, Council Member Lololi. Council Member Valenzuela. Yeah, very, very powerful. Um, you know, we did a panel with city staff on missing and murdered indigenous relatives, which is a phenomenon you might have heard about. And Sacramento is actually the second highest rate in the state. Um, and one of the main reason um, that women and girls have been gone missing is through trafficking. Um, and so obviously the fastest way to stop trafficking is to get the people doing it to stop doing it, right? But, you know, in lieu of that, you know, the social safety net, the checking in on your friends, the understanding when a relationship is starting to take a turn when someone's asking you to do something you don't want to do. Sometimes it's forceful like this. Sometimes it's not, right? Sometimes it's a very gradual relationship. And so I thought, honestly, the scene where you could see the friends becoming really concerned about, hey, why, where is she going? Who is she meeting with? Was incredibly powerful because it does speak to, hey, what if they had said, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to go with you. Or, hey, wait a minute, let's not, let's meet them somewhere else. Or let's not do that, you know? And so it does paint a picture of all the different ways that that situation could have been a different 
differently for the person in your video and was really, really powerful. But yeah, definitely wanted to highlight the intersection with an issue I'm incredibly passionate about and just really thank you again for raising awareness. It is really, really unfortunate that it's happening so much here, just like as you said in your slides, we have a lot of hotels, we have a lot of freeways, we have a lot of a big airport, you know, it's just one of those um, unfortunate, horrible things that are happening, but we can do something more if we learn to pay attention to each other, you know, if we learn to look out when you see somebody, you know, and I know in ERs is another big intervention point, you know, you have these young women end up in emergency rooms for different reasons in schools, you know, the Sac City Unified has someone who focuses on recognizing people who might be victims of trafficking, so we can do so much to just be observant and to check in on each other, you know, that was one thing I really took from your, your video, is just how powerful that is when we look out for each other and make sure that people have what they need and don't fall into the wrong situation, so thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Valenzuela. Councilmember Talamantes? Great research on such a heavy subject that mm -hmm. impacts all of us, especially here in Sacramento. But, um, well, my question applies to you too, so tell me about how you arrived to your team name. Uh, we chose our team name, the Cali Kids, because, um, shocker, we're all from California. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we, we knew that we were going to take on a serious topic, and we wanted to represent California in our serious topic. I love it. Thank you for the explanation, and great work to you all. Thank you so much, Councilmember Talamantes. Mayor, Mayor Terrell Steinberg, I was going to name my name again. <laughs> Thank you. We ought to change the name for tonight. It's okay. You're coming up here right I'll after these are done. It's okay. <laughs> so again, commend you as well on taking on a really vital subject, um, something that really should be unacceptable in, in America, anywhere in the world. So you're, I want to understand your 888 number, that your, your phone number, your 888 number. Is that a number for, peop, for victims to call or a number for people to call if they want to get involved in the effort? Um, sorry. Okay. Uh, it's a number for victims to call, um, similar to like the suicide hotline or even 911, how it's like emergency dispatch, um, just to provide that support and those resources that are out there for victims. And so th that's an existing number? Yes. And, and who runs the line? You mean trafficking hotline? Because I know the law, the law does require, so here's a thought. The law requires, and so if you thought about where you're going to distribute these, you want to do a billboard, okay. So back many years ago, um, when I had a different job, <laughs> I, I, I put forward a bill in the legislature to require bars and uh, truck stops to actually post a number, and I, I, that's why I was asking whether it's the same number. It might be this, that's the, yeah. okay, that may be the same number, it may be a different number under the state law. Um, but there were limits, it was a requirement. Um, and it was limited, as I said, to bars and to uh, truck stops and maybe a couple of other places where the legislature deemed it, you know, um, high-risk places, right, for human trafficking. But I wonder if you not only did your billboard, but if you found, figure out, figured out ways or places where this number should be prominently posted, but where it's not prominently posted currently, either because of the limitation of the, the law that I did or just, the, ju just where it is and isn't, that that could be incredible, right, where you're, you're spreading, it's like organizing, right? You're spreading your billboard through all kinds of different ways that um, where, where a victim might see it or they might not otherwise see it. Like in the bathrooms at the airport. Yeah. Well, right. And I don't know exactly, again, where they're, you know, where the number is prominently placed, but maybe we could think through with you how we could disseminate this number much much wider yeah definitely I think 
what we've learned through our research is that like students like us, we haven't heard about this issue and we don't know a lot about it to even be educated about it. So I think the biggest thing is spreading online awareness first and then we can go into our schools as well, as well as our airports and our bars and clubs and everything like that. But I think, I think the main thing is that it starts online and we get the word out because of how fast that even our generation can spread information through the internet. Social, you know, Rick, Rick Jennings here he says social media as well, right? But where are victims, where are victims at? I mean, literally, physically, where maybe we're not currently getting this number to them, that's all. Um, I had an interview with one of the organizations within Sacramento, the Cash Community, which is the Community Against Sexual Harm. And one of like their manager, uh, Christy Kiefer, she told us that the Natomas District 1 area has a very like big hotspot there. And she was telling us that a lot of like the places have women, like it's just open, like it's very visible. So I think we could probably put this billboard at like bus stops and stuff like around that area. I think bathrooms within the restaurants, grocery oh. stores. Uh, another thing that we learned uh, with our interview with Cash was that a lot of the um, victims of human trafficking and um, prostitution, unwillful prostitution, uh, they're also coming from Natomas and like closer and closer to residential areas. So I think putting that even in schools and like just in parks, public areas, specifically social media though, um, that so that we can have the number in our heads when we're going into a situation like that, and just to have to be thinking about that more and more. Thank you so much, Team Cali Kids. Um, I also just want to echo my colleagues really quick. Councilmember Jennings just gave me the signal. I'm um, gonna we'll wrap it up, um, but I. I I do want to say just great job on the presentation. Um, I think we all know, and especially from your presentation, I, I'm really, um, it's really great to hear that you also interviewed and you met with Cash as well, because they're a really great organization that uh, really tackles human trafficking here in the Sacramento region. Um, and this is such an important issue. I really love your PSA at the beginning with the text, the bubbles and the text. Um, I think Mayor mentioned like, you know, where can we find folks? And really, I think starting with our young people, right? I think a lot of it happens also online, right? Folks haven't really met other individuals in person. A lot of it happens online. And then um, I think your PSA really kind of showed kind of like for young people, these are ways in which human trafficking can happen. Um, something that Council Member Valenzuela brought up that I was going to share is that I thought another piece that I thought was really powerful in your PSA was really um, just the friends checking in on each other. Um, that's so important because I think in so many ways, uh, young girls and women are targeted uh, for human uh, trafficking, but uh, sometimes it's really hard for them to, to get out of it, right? And so I think taking care of each other, checking in on your friends is so important. And so I thought that, was, that really resonated with me and I thought it was really powerful. And so great job, great presentation, and just really proud of all of you. Job well done. All right, we have one more team left, and um, they got a pretty cool, pretty cool team name. Um, the next topic is homelessness prevention in Sacramento, and it is our last group, our last cohort of young leaders. Good evening, Mayor, City Clerk, City Manager, City Attorney, and City Council. My name is Yartem Rado, and I'm a senior at Intercom High School, currently residing in Council Member Kaplan's District. And I'm also a returning youth and peer mentor, and now I'd like to introduce our group, uh, the Purple Panthers. Hello and good evening, City Mayor, and City and Council, my fault. We are here to present to you an issue that is prevalent in our community, homelessness. I'm Alexander Gallardo, and I, I am a senior at Sacramento Charter High School, and I reside in Council of Maple in Council Member Maple District. Good evening. My name is Bonnie Singh. I'm a senior at NP3 High School and I currently reside in Councilwoman Kaplan's district. Good evening. My name is Benjamin Lopez. I'm a sophomore at Intercom High School and I reside in Councilmember Kaplan's district. Hi, I'm Colson Nguyen. 
I am a sophomore at Christian Brothers High School, and I reside in Councilmember Jennings District. Good evening. My name is Aoife Malik. I'm a sophomore at uh, Westlake Charter High School, and I currently reside in Councilwoman Lisa Kaplan's district. Hi, my name is Essie Colson. I'm a junior at Rosemont High School, and I reside in Vice Mayor Guerrero's district. Hello, my name is Harun Hussain. I'm a student at... at I am a junior at Sacramento New Technology High School, and I reside in Councilmember Jennings District. Hi, my name is Kaden Skakal. I'm a sophomore at Intercom High School, and I reside in Councilwoman Kaplan's district. Hi, my name is Lily Randolph. I'm a senior at Intercom High School, and I reside in Councilwoman Talamante's district. Hello, my name is Luke Basco. I am a rising senior at Intercom High School, and I reside in Councilmember Kaplan's district one. Good evening, my name is Natalyn Carthen. I'm a junior at Natomas High School and I currently reside in Councilwoman Talamante's district. Hello, my name is Mason Takamoto. I'm a sophomore at NP3 High School and I, uh, and I currently live in Councilwoman Talamante's district three. <laughs> <laughs> City Council, for those of you unaware, a study from usafacts.org has ranked Sacramento as the sixth largest homeless population in the U.S. To a great extent, the issue's main preface is through this rising cost of living. It's led homelessness to grow three times faster than we can provide shelter and housing. And we currently only have 2,000 beds that are available to serve 10,000 homeless people. Programs like the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency can help prevent homelessness, but there's a lack of awareness of these programs. Lack of awareness, coupled with rising cost of living, can force low-income families onto the streets. This pie chart shows the results of the first question of the survey that we sent out to our community. It reveals that the community is concerned about the homelessness crisis, with around 90% of respondents saying that they either agree or strongly agree the homelessness needs to be addressed here in Sacramento. The second pie chart shows that around 70% of respondents are unaware of the rapid increase of homelessness since the last census. This pie chart shows that around 64% of respondents are once again unaware about the different types of programs that can keep vulnerable, vulnerable individuals housed and off the streets. Our solution focuses on homelessness prevention by means of spreading awareness of the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency. We hope this program will help vulnerable individuals and families stay housed in an era of expensive living. Our goal is to solve homelessness with preventative programs that can be discovered via social media, billboards, and PSAs. Although our awareness campaign focuses on the SHRI, there are other programs such as the Tenant Protection Program and the Youth Employment Opportunity Program. The Tenant Protection Program sets a, le a limit to rent increase, and they protect tenants from lease termination. This prevents homelessness similarly to the SHRA by keeping people housed. The Youth Employment Opportunity Program assists average youth through workshop experience. This prevents homelessness in youth by helping them find a stable job so they won't become homeless after graduation. This is the billboard that we created, and the objective of this billboard is to spread awareness for a program called the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency. Uh, this rental assistance program provides financial support to lower income individuals and families, and our aim is that we can expand recognition for this program, and as a result, it can aid people on the verge of homelessness. For our PSA, we wanted to highlight the different programs available that lower the risk of homelessness, most notably the SHRA. The goal was to have the characters explain what the programs are and how to apply for them in a way that is both informational and humorous. What? What is this? Paycheck right now, man. And I'm past doing all of my bills. 
and I'm afraid if I get kicked out, I don't have anywhere to go. I could also lose my job, and I love my job. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Have you heard about our programs run by the city of Sacramento that are able to help you? No, I haven't. What programs are available to me? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are a variety of programs ran by the city of Sacramento, such as the Tenant Protection Program or the SHRA. What's the SHRA? Well, I'm glad you asked. The SHRA, or Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency, helps people apply for funds and loans at a time of economic crisis. With their contributions, many are able to fight off eviction. They also can fight for the development of affordable housing. How do I sign up for the program? You can apply for grants, funds, and even loans at shra.org. Wow, bro. You just saved me from homelessness. No Thank problem, you. Uh, Our social media call to action is an informative Q&A that further displays the resources available to you. These resources are in question and answer format, varying in depth of, con of concerns the viewer might have. There are resources to help you. What resources can help me when I live in Sacramento? Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency, or SHRA, helps tenants pay their rent. Who qualifies for SHRA? To be eligible for rental assistance, you must be renting a home within the county of Sacramento, have household gross annual income at or below the low income limit. What if I don't rent a house but rent a room? You can still apply to SHRA if you meet the requirements. All you have to do is show proof of lease or rental agreement. How do I apply? You can register at and complete the application. Ask more questions at or... <laughs> All in all, rental assistance is crucial in our fight against homelessness. It keeps thousands off the streets each, each year. It can only be effective, however, if we continue to spread awareness of what is available to the Sacramento public and those who need it. If you have any questions, please ask, and thank you all for your time. Thank you, Purple Panthers. Really appreciate uh, this very timely topic being the last topic because it's a great segue for, again, I'm going to say the mayor's proposal that he's presenting next week. We'll love to hear you all call in as well to chime in on that. Um, I do have some comments. Great presentation, uh, but I have some council members in the queue. Uh, first is Council Member Valenzuela. Well, I don't know if you watched the meeting at 2 p.m., probably not, um, <laughs> because you were probably busy preparing, but this was exactly the conversation that we were having, yep. so well done, and keying in on a really important issue, which is prevention. Um, it's far more affordable and far less harmful to keep someone from ending up on the street in the first place, and I'm really glad that you want to spread awareness, um, and it's like a mixed feeling thing, though. So I'm the only tenant up here, I believe still, right? I'm still, yeah, I'm the only tenant up here right now. Um, there's no more money in the rental assistance program. Um, so when the program lost, ran out of money, we had about 4,900 households that had applied that did not get any money. Um, about 70% of them are potentially at risk of being homeless. So I think for me, your slides with a little tweak are still incredibly relevant. Like we must have this program. We must get more money for this program. Not having emergency rent assistance leads to people falling onto the street um, because this was a one-time federal source and state source of funding, which was great during COVID. But when it ran out, there's still some for the county residents but not any more for the city residents, which is really unfortunate because there's a huge amount of need, right? Um, and I think you do a really good job of talking about why this connects to homelessness because for many years people refused to like think about housing and tenant protections as related to homelessness and some of us were over here screaming like, ah, <laughs> like of course if people can't afford their rent increases or get evicted, they're going to probably end up homeless in this market. And so I just really want to commend you for having a conversation that a lot of adults in our region are still struggling to have and really putting a really fine point and clear message onto why it's so important to have programs like this. Um, so, um, yeah, I just, I feel like it's making me feel all the mixed things. Like, I feel really happy that you highlighted this, and it also makes me feel really sad and, and really ignites in me, though, that fire to find more funding to keep the rental assistance program funded because um, that is so critical, and I think your videos really tell a really important story. So thank you for that. 
Thank you so much, Councilmember Valenzuela. Councilmember Kaplan. Um, I just want to echo what my fellow councilwoman said. Um, you know, it's one of those things where uh, during the pandemic and COVID, it was a great thing that SHRA was able to create. Now the hard part is where do we find the funding um, and where does it exist? But I don't think there's anybody on this council that isn't willing to, to look at where can we find some of the, these federal dollars, state dollars. Um, and if we're able to potentially put a bond on the ballot, um, where that goes as well. So I would advise, because you guys did miss our two o'clock meeting, which we discussed for almost two hours, SHRA um, and the housing plan as we move forward. Um, your comments are still welcome because this, the SHRA uh, long range house, housing plan is coming back to city council. So you've already opened the door. Please don't stop here. What matters is you guys did have the passion, you did the homework. Now, stay involved, see if these items come back up at City Hall, and guess what? You can apply comments and put them in online because we see them and we read them. So that is really important um, that you do stay involved um, because you guys might find out and know things that you can pass on to us that we can implement. But job well done. Very proud of you and all the work that you guys put in. Thank you so much, Council Member Kaplan. Council Member Talamantes. All right, Team Purple Panthers, tell me the history of your name. Okay, I love it. Fits with the shirt. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, so our name was, uh, it, well, let me start off by saying what a lot of the teams echoed here tonight. It's that when we came together as a group, we weren't necessarily united. We were, some of us, I'm, at, I'm pretty sure some of us knew each other, but we all stayed kind of to ourselves in some way, at least in the beginning. So our team name, Purple Panthers, is a sort of compromise. And also, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Team Red Dogs, because uh, we, <laughs> we heard them discussing their name. We heard them <laughs> discussing their name. And we, were like, and we were like, you know what? Let's take the philosophy of color, animal. So, <laughs> so we just keep narrowing down the... The list of animals, right? Cats, dogs, but then people go, Oh, I'm a dog person. Oh, I'm a cat person. And then someone goes, Oh, Panthers. And then we're like, Why don't we go with pink Panthers? But I myself go, I don't like the color pink. So then we settled on purple. Great. So were you team dog or cat or panther? I myself? Yeah. I was, uh, I'm a dog person. <laughs> Thank you. But I own a cat. <laughs> I love it. I'm a dog person, too. <laughs> thank you, Councilmember Talamantes. Councilmember Jennings. Uh, thank you. I thought you guys did a great job, and um, really proud of all of you for the work that you put in and making it happen. And I think um, I heard one of my colleagues say, stay involved. I mean, this issue is not an issue that goes away uh, in the next six months, 12 months maybe not even in the next 18 to 24 months. Uh, and I just wanted to ask you the question, had you had the opportunity to talk to uh, the executive director of SHRA, Sacramento Housing Redevelopment Agency, Lachelle Dozier, have you had that opportunity? Okay, so that, that look tells me no, that you haven't. <laughs> okay, and so I think that would be great because they're coming back to us in September and maybe you can build on the work that you've done already, which allows you to stay involved by getting to meet her and understanding what she would want you to do in order to build on the project. So just an idea, you know, that I want to put on the table to you because you've got a great base. Uh, I love the statement that you make in that it's an affirmation for me that homelessness can be prevented. And that's what all of us have to believe in our heart, that it can be prevented if we're willing to do the work, put in the energy, and be intentional about making sure that it does, that it is prevented. And so I just want to give you that opportunity to maybe meet with Lachelle Dozier, talk about your work, find out if there's anything she can do, anything you can do for her that would help her in her presentation for September in front of the council. Thank you again.
Thank you so much, Council Member Jennings. And then my last comment, I just wanted to say to the Purple Panthers, great presentation. I think we've heard the stat recently and over and over again, especially uh, shout out to Council Member Maple. She says this on the dais for the past couple of weeks um, because we have, we have the numbers in front of us is that for every one person we house, three more enters the system, right? And I think what you all really highlighted and center and uplifted was really the need for prevention, right? And making sure that we do everything we can to keep our residents are in our families inside their homes. Um, SHRA has several really great programs, but as you heard from Council Member Valenzuela, that um, there is a lack of resources and funding for that, especially around the rental assistance. And so um, while I was listening, I you know, kind of gave a sad face to Council Member Maple and Valenzuela, but that also you know, really energized us to say, hey, this is something that our young people are also saying it's important, right? It's about prevention and making sure we keep our families in our home. And so really just want to give kudos to all of you uh, for your great presentation and really centering prevention uh, when we talk about homelessness here in the city of Sacramento. So you all should be really, really proud and congratulations and great job. Um, this is the part where we close it out. Um, Mayor, can I close it out really quick? Is that okay? Uh, before you come back right here. Can I ask a question? Yes. Oh yeah, any more additional questions? I do just, have just real quick, uh, I didn't catch your name again. Can you tell me your name? Gentleman to your left, to your right. Say it again. Esley. 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 Um, does Denzel Washington know that you're out there after his job? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you contacted him to let him know that you're available? You know, as a stand-in in case he gets sick or something. You haven't talked to him. I got his number if you need to call. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Thank you, Council Member Jennings. Thank you, Coach. Always really appreciate your comments. Um, before we close it out, and I actually believe we have some um, comments on this item as well. I definitely want to ask Sarah, Rhonda, and Maria to come up, and also our certified educators that's been part of the program. If you can come up, I just want to say thank you so much on behalf of, and I know my colleagues feel the same way too, um, Maria, Sarah, and Rhonda, and our teachers as well, our certified teachers that have been part of the program. I just really want to say thank you so much just for your incredible work, your heart and your hustle, and the time that you have committed to make this program so successful. Um, and so really want to center all of you. You know, for the past two years that I've been here on the council, this is my third year listening to these presentations. They get better and better every year. They're clean. I know that you all worked very closely with the students as well uh, to do your best. I mean, from the PSA to the billboards to the call to action to recognizing the issue. I mean, it's amazing. Um, not elected officials here, but elected officials in the Sacramento region can't even do like break down like the issue and like the call to action, right? And I think it's just so powerful. And I just, I just want to say thank you to city staff and all of you for all your great work. Um, and so, um, one round of applause to each and every one of you. <laughs> And lastly, before we go into uh, public comments, I do want to mention to all the young people who are watching and all our uh, student uh, participant in the summer at City Hall uh, program is that uh, pretty soon we're going to have a youth liaison uh, sitting right there next to, to me on the dais where the mayor is sitting. Um, and I know it's going through the PNP process right now, but really hoping that one of you will be serving up here on the dais as well. I think one of the uh, suggestions and requirement is that they have gone through somewhat of a city program and we recommend it the summer at City Hall. And so just putting that plug out out there that um, pretty soon a young person is going to be sitting right there and I hope to see all of you applying for that position. And so with that, uh, we'll open it up to public comments on this item. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. So we have uh, five speakers so far. Leah Shank, Chino Mez, then Dr. Truth Bay, and Leah Shank. Good evening, Council. I want to first thank the youth students and the incredible adult leaders that highlighted the trafficking concerns of the city. As you guys know, my name is Leah Schenk, and I'm the founder of Impact and the creator of Project Take. On July 1st, we held a community workshop in District 8 on sex trafficking and prevention. We had nearly 60 groups of community members, which is showcased here on these sign-in sheets. Community members and survivors that showed up and voiced their concerns on the uptick of sexual exploitation for our children here in the city of Sacramento and beyond. 
In this workshop, there were a number of community leaders that have since scheduled us to conduct the training workshop at these pers prospective sites. Roberts Family Development Center, SAC Youth Center will be hosting us on September 9th in D2. We ask you to join us. In closing, my organization has been assigned to the community safety and engagement at the California State Fair. Each night we leave there at midnight and we head out to the trafficking hubs to rescue children, rescue individuals that are being forced into sex slavery, and provide necessary resources. Last night we were called out to a missing child case at a location in District 6. It was a 13-year-old girl that was lured by a trafficker with the promise to buy her school clothes. She was very the, one of the very few that we can save. That is attributed to boots on the ground, grassroots advocacy work that we put out and in going out into these locations every single night. Recently, the council approved a $3 million to violence prevention. Children being forced into sex slavery is violence. Sacramento is one of the largest hubs of trafficking in the country. While we recognize that some of this occurs in the county too, we also understand that trafficking is intersectional as predators change locations pretty often. We need you to help us. We need you to answer the call. We need you to respond to the emails. We must implement this workshop in our schools as we need you to invest in this preventative curriculum and support our efforts in keeping our community safe. I also want to thank you, thank you um, for Katie, for sponsoring the program too. Thank you so much. Thank you for and your thank comments. You. Our thank next you. speaker is Chino Mez, Dr. Truth Bay. Chino. Hello, you guys. Uh, my name is Chino Mez, and I'm a Sacramento State student. I go to, um, I'm a film major. Uh, stingers up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my whole thing is I love to create. Ever since I was young, it's been a, probably the best way to express myself whenever, you know, life handed me any troubles. Um, it's an outlet that kept me out of negative situations. Um, but what I've realized, you know, now going to Sac State and being a part of the program is being a creative is almost like a lonely road, especially here in Sacramento. Um, I don't have a lot of resources to go in, use a high-speed MacBook and edit 4K videos. I literally try to go to school during the summer and uh, they wouldn't let me into the labs because it's summer and school's not in session. But, you know, my career path isn't tied to school. Um, I think what Sacramento really needs is a place where creatives can link up with other young creatives and be able to work on high-speed accessories and um, just have the tools to, you know, really connect and network and, you know, get better with each other because the only thing that can make a creative better is people. People feel each other, you know? So if we could sponsor these, like, Freeze World or any other type of, you know, thing for young creators to go, it needs to happen. But thank you. Um, good evening. I know we're short on time. Uh, my name is Jerry Wilcott. This is my younger brother, Robert Wilcott. Um, we are currently at Sacramento State will become the first two African-American siblings to ever play soccer at a collegiate level here in Sacramento. And, um, like my, my, my friend Chino was saying, I'm also a film major, and we just think it'll be an amazing uh, opportunity to have a space to where we can have sports and a place for film for the youth. So thank you. Love it. Hello, y'all. Um, my name is Orion. I go to school in LA for acting, and I've lived in Sacramento for nine months now. And going off of talking about creative space, I think it is very important for having young kids, young adults that have creative spaces, because we're talking about having a place where people can feel safe and also not be subjected to the norms of what you should do after college or high school, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially in a world where we're adopting to online, AI, virtual reality. And I think it's good that these gentlemen behind me, and including myself, that we go to a school, that we go to schools where we have these tools, where we can create these things with, um, especially the 
up quality tools that we have, but we want to give back and we want to show that there are other outlets besides, you know, the traditional, you know, becoming a lawyer or going to become a doctor. You know, you can go to school for film. You can go to school for acting. It is very cool and it is ex extremely fun. So with your help and your support, I think we can really make this a possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, Dr. Truth Bay still here? Thank you. Um, and then we have four callers online. And just to remind folks, we're still at the Summer at City Hall student presentations. Well, this is a great moment right now. You guys are so inspiring. Young people is the bloodline of the future. I want to first um, give homage to uh, Sarah Musser, Rhonda Patterson, Maria Vidas Medal for such a great job you did with the youth and, and preparing for today. And I want us to take notice and take what they, they've done seriously. We got to be honest on the makings of politics as well. When they are elected in these seats, do they have self-interest or do they continue to work for the community? Those are the things that we need to be transparent with with the young people nowadays. They're not stupid. These kids go through a lot, and they barely have a resource. Ask any of them, where can they go to, to do music or, or acting or film 24 hours, seven days a week? Is there a studio that's available 24 hours, seven days a week that's for free in Sacramento? So if they know this, Mr. Steinberg, we need to really work on this. Honestly, we hear to work with you. We're not here to bash, you understand? So I'm saying the public comment and stuff that we're saying today needs to be taken into consideration behind the scenes. Of course. Moving forward, I want to see these students really engage in civic duty. There's a lot of schools that are not giving field trips to these students here every week. Every time you have city council, you should have this room full of young people because they are the ones that have the answers, not us. And so I'm so extremely proud of our Sacramento kids and our youth and continue to do the work and don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't do anything that you put your heart's desire. We love you so very much. Give yourselves a round of applause. Our next speaker, um, we have four speakers online. Call in user one. Yes, this is Lambert Davis, and I'm, I'm very inspired by the youth that I'm listening to, and I'm going to inspire the youth when you listen to this youth. I, didn't, I don't think I heard too many Grant Pacers in this discussion, but you're getting ready to hear one now. Take a look at an 18-year-old Pacer that just graduated from Grant, and look what she created. Listen to her. Better than bad cheesecakes. Better than bad cheesecakes. So it's going to be a good day. With the better than bad cheesecakes. One bite will change your life. One bite will change your life. One bite will get you right. One bite will get you right. Better than bad cheesecakes. Better than bad cheesecakes. So it's going to be a good day with it to the bad bag cheesecake. One bite will change your life. One bite will get you right. To the bad bag cheesecake. To the bad bag cheesecake. So it's going to be a good day with it to the bad bag cheesecake. That's an 18-year-old from Grand High School. That's an 18-year-old. Very shy, getting ready to go to high school, I mean college. And she helped us receive an award during the 4th of July as the best cheesecakes in Northern California. And I'm a baby boomer, and I, didn't, I don't even understand TikTok. But I was wise enough to get out of her way and let her do what she did. And she even jumped into Instagram and taught me that. So shout out to you young people. And there's a lot of talented people at Grand High School. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Alexander. 
Our next speaker is Alexander. Alexander, if you'll unmute. Hello. Are you there? Yes, we are. Great. I am too. Um, what youth speakers, uh, there's a lot of confidence, a lot of uh, good public speaking skills, probably better than what I had at that age. But what needs to be emphasized is the schools and politicians are not giving kids Ryan. the tools they need to succeed. Over half of the children in Sacramento and nearly all California cities will not be able to do math, English, and writing at the 12th grade level. These are basic skills necessary to do basic jobs, not to mention top level careers like doctors, lawyers, nurses, architects, and many others. A kid who goes to college or participates on youth programs who cannot read, write, or do math at the 12th grade level is severely disadvantaged. Children should not be watching television or watching movies, and they certainly shouldn't be able to access the internet or cell phones without supervision. Personally, I'd never let any child under 18 have a cell phone, far too dangerous. Millions of kids have had terrible things happen to them because they were exposed to the internet and they weren't able to deal with that responsibility. Said anything readers are leaders, leaders are readers. Why He's are books so important? Offensive. Because they teach about human nature that never changes. Plutarch, the Bible, Robinson Crusoe, The Count of Monte Cristo, Le Miserable, A Tale of Two Cities, are just a few of the classics these teach the lessons of human nature, which will guide the young so they aren't deceived by those who wish to manipulate and use them. My website, MisanoNews.com, will teach the children more in 12 hours than what they learn in 12 years of history class. They will learn more about virtue and wisdom there than they will ever learn in the schools, colleges, in the media, and likely on social media. Thank you. Our next speaker is Barry Boyd. Barry Boyd, if you'll unmute. Thank you there, Mindy. Good afternoon, or I should say good evening to you all. And I uh, first want to start off again, as uh, Mindy just stated, I am Barry F. Boyd, a proud alum of Kennedy High School in District 7 and a very, very uh, long-term resident here in District 8. And I want to say congratulations to all the youngsters if you saw how old I was, that's why I'm calling you youngsters. Uh, uh, congratulations on the on the work and presentations that you gave, guys uh, and, and girls have um, uh, gave this evening. Excuse me. And some of the graphic work, the the posters were of professional caliber. And this is someone that used to work in the film and television industry. To that, um, segueing into what was just spoken of in regards to the opportunity for um, uh, those who are seeking to be an actor or in, in entertainment in some facet, when you're not exposed to something, you don't have that opportunity or leg up to start building towards something that is your passion. Uh, when I was growing up, there was absolutely zero outlet for uh, any of us in regards to uh, in the entertainment industry. There was, you know, school play, and that was about that. But uh, again, having spent about 15 plus years in the entertainment industry, it would be fantastic that if Sacramento offered uh, some type of um, training, i.e. exposure to film and television production, all aspects of it. I also wanted to touch, but go quickly as I can here, uh, as uh, Council Member Sean LaLoli had stated, if you are able to see the movie Sound of Freedom, it will give you a whole new aspect in regards to the horror of human trafficking y you will come out touched i suggest that if you're able to please go see it and i would like to say quickly um for the youngsters that did the housing pr um, um, presentation thank you for your comments our final speaker is richard wake on the summer at city hall presentations yeah richard wake city council district seven thank you for allowing me to speak on this issue uh, just two quick, uh, just a few quick things here. Great presentations. I didn't see all of them, but very inspiring stuff. It's good to see young people getting involved. Uh, first thing to the young people that were involved in uh, the issue of human trafficking, mm -hmm. if you haven't already done so, um, you know, seeing a movie is a great thing. Okay, but if you haven't talked to this person already, I would highly recommend that you speak to Maggie Krell. Her last name is spelled K R E L L. Maggie Krell is a former candidate for Sacramento County District Attorney. She also uh, currently serves on the, as an attorney for Planned Parenthood and was also a state district attorney that was responsible for taking down Backpage. 
which is one of the huge, huge websites that was involved in human trafficking. Maggie Krell would be a much better firsthand experience than going into a theater and watching the movie. She is one of the unsung heroes here in Sacramento that helped brought down a major, major sex trafficking ring in Sacramento. And then to the young people who were involved in, uh, you know, homeless, homelessness and getting people to work, several years ago, I don't know, maybe 2017 or 2018, one of the uh, unhoused people that used to come to the city council meetings is, goes by the name of Fago. Fago proposed that the city that the city of Sacramento hire unhoused people to clean up the city, pay them a living wage, give them a food voucher and give them a place to stay for every day that they work. This was successfully done in a city in New Mexico. I don't remember which city it was right off the top of my head, but guess what? That city was run by Republicans. Thank you very much. I hope you take my advice to heart. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I have a next speaker. All right. What I would like is to invite... I don't know how we do this, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Vang, but we want to take a big picture with the city council. Yes. Yes. <laughs> why don't you Why don't you help choreograph this? Yeah. Some of y'all can come back up here. Some of y'all can be right here. Hey, Oz! Hey, Oz! They all look there all behind you. In the middle. I know. Look, they're all running up here. Come on! I love the view. Karina, we're going to get lost in the crowd. Yeah, you don't sit in this seat. Yeah, who wants to sit in this seat here? Go for it. Go for it. There we go. Your name again? Nikita. Nikita. What shirt does he wear? Sorry? What's your name of origin? Russia. Russia. How long have you been here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Years ago. Yeah, it's so fantastic. Yeah. So involved. Are you, you're obviously doing great. I love it. Hello. How do you? Hello. Hello. I'm Daryl. Hi, everybody. Come on. Let's do it. Can I put my armor on your shoulder? Three, two, one. Summer at City Hall. Summer at City Hall. Oh, Gregor. 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 Sorry. Uh, I was wondering if I could get a picture with your shirt. Well, it's good. It does have a filter, just so you know. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> take a look. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, ready, sir? Thank you, you so much. You got me! Thank you. Thank you very Gregor. much, sir.
We, we we still do have we do we still do have some city business. Um, it's cool. Finish. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> All right. Council comments. We do have. Uh, Comments for items not on the agenda? No. Um, the request of a Go. So I have 11 speakers for matters not on the agenda. The first is Rebecca Sandoval, Charles Faust. Uh, Yolanda Villanueva, Rebecca, please proceed. When do I start? Please proceed. Okay. Five of you are previous school board members. Being a school board member in Sacramento seems to be a nice stepping stone to the city council. As a as school board members, you know you were responsible for student safety. And I had hoped that this council would be concerned with the negative impact on the learning environment and safety of children at Garden Valley Elementary School with the placement of Joshua House Volunteer Hospice across from the school. Twin Rivers Unified School District has made clear since the onset of this project what their concerns are. Twin Rivers has offered several alternative sites and Joshua House did not accept these offers. The Twin Rivers School Board passed a resolution opposing the location of Joshua House. For over two and a half years, the affected community has expressed their concerns. This city council has received over 150 e-comments, reiterating their frustration and satisfaction and the lack of community outreach. Over 25 have been submitted this evening, and I hope you read them. In June 2022, city leaders held a groundbreaking ceremony for Joshua House and a city lot across from the actual Joshua House site. The event was private. Mothers and children from the Garden Valley community were removed by security guard. I was removed as well and threatened with arrest. I had been reelected as a trustee the night before. Our city leaders were part of this um, event and drove off seeing women and children from this low income, under resourced, marginalized community outside the event, which were excluded. Joshua House team claimed they have community support, yet they have failed to adequately meet with impacted community and have completely disregarded opposition. At a June 28th meeting, over 100 neighbors showed up to reiterate and demand that Joshua House consider Twin Rivers proposals for alternative sites they've offered. The District 3 Community Coalition, an assemblage of community associations within South Natomas District 3, submitted a letter to the mayor and city council acknowledging the lack of community outreach. Joshua if House. If your comments, your time is complete. Our next speaker is Charles Faust, then Yolanda Villanueva. You guys have the camera thing for the phone still, or is that done? I can put, go ahead and get started, and I can work on it. Where would it go? Put it on the gray thing. Oh. Please proceed. Yeah, on, on the gray pad on, be, on the middle. Wrong one. Beautiful. So I've been volunteering. I'm 33. I've been volunteering in the homeless space for about 27 of those years. I've seen and heard some crazy shit stuff that would scare most people, give people nightmares. In the last couple of weeks, I've seen and heard more stories coming out of your guys' safe ground locations that would put those 27 years to shame. Stuff, the rampant drug use, the rampant rape that's happening within the safe grounds, right? You'd think they'd be safe. They're safe grounds, and they're just not. Also, just the general unsanitary conditions that people are being moved into. They're obviously in terrible situations on the streets, but you can't move people off of that and put them in somewhere that's just as bad or worse. 
the um, Sacramento Homeless Union and I would like to be able to do a private health investigation of some of the safe ground sites, particularly Miller Park, because we were told we could go there and see some stuff. Then they told us to come back the next day. Then they told us to come back the next day if we were invited as guests. And they told me to come back today, come back Monday. And I went back Monday, and they still said I couldn't come in and see some of the conditions that people are living in and do kind of a general private audit, which, by the way, is my background, is actually in food safety inspection and outdoor living conditions and food prep. So it's something I actually know what I'm doing with this. So we'd like for you guys to let myself with Hope for Sacramento and the Sacramento Homeless Union in to particularly the Miller Park to see some of the conditions and do kind of a little bit of a health investigation, if possible. Because that's what they said. They said that if we got city council approval, they'd let us in this time. So that's like the last kind of ditch resort is to get one of you guys to approve letting us get in there. And then what I have on my phone is, like, I represent Hope for Sacramento. And this is one of the locations that we were looking at over the last month. And right now it's 87.5% vacant. It's in the Natomas area, which I think it's in Lisa's area. What was that? Um, Hellnet? I don't know. It's on e-commerce. E Thank you for your comments. Your time is complete. Our next speaker is Yolanda Villanueva an and Sonia Williams. We all Thank you for your comments. Yolanda? And following Yolanda is um, Sonia Williams-Lewis. Hello, my name is Yolanda Villanueva. I was a civil state worker for Department of Consumer Affairs. I also was the president of DLC 781 for SAIU Local 1000. Steinberg, you helped me uh, when we first started the Shira. We moved it over from Shira because it was another name. So I want to thank you. The Shira uh, Volunteers of America and Steps Forward really pulled in when I got my sickest. Uh, I had to pick between medicines and or a roof over my head. Well, the first time I picked roof over my head, but that was not a good decision. So along with Steinberg's office and Mac, uh, Kevin McCarthy and Doris Metsui, you have helped me. Well, now I'm at another road cross. Um, I'm terminally ill, and I'm at Curtis Park Apartments. I applied for the uh, Sarah II program where I was showed that I could I would qualify because I met all the requirements. I was sick in bed for six uh, months, did get the surgery. I made it, but I'm in a crossroads again. I may not make this next one. But the point is, uh, Shira uh, steps forward, uh, assured me, they helped me. We have a, I'm a senior citizen. I work at Curtis, I live in Curtis Park. They helped us get all the work, footwork done, but to finally be the finalized to show my income and why I qualified for this, they dropped the ball on me. So yesterday, they tried to evict me. I was at the uh, Carol Miller, and I refused to not tell the truth. They wanted me to, and I say they, steps forward, wanted me to sign a letter of fraud saying that Sarah... Your comments, your time is complete. Oh, we, I, I think what we want to do is see if somebody from the manager's office yeah, might, so. may be able to assist you. Okay, we'll see if somebody can talk to you offline here and see if yes. we can help you. That, yes, okay. that would be nice because I'm just fine. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Sonia Williams-Lewis. Thank you so much. Uh, Sonia is our next speaker, and then Zion. Hello, all. Um, it's been a long time since I've been standing here at this space. To those of you who we still are connected with and those of you who not who are not, um, I bid you, you know, the thing thing that we do when we come here and have issue with how we are managing um, not just time, space, and resources within our community, but that how we're representing um, each and every constituent in the city of Sacramento. And so I wanted to come here because it was brought to my attention 
attention that the youth um, were speaking in regards to what they are really, 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 really super concerned about in our community. And I have often said, as a former educator, spent almost 20 years teaching high school, earning degrees in history and psychology, earning a master's degree in education, doing the work in the community for free of charge, um, you're welcome. Um, and for, to hear the things that some of us in here know that are important to the young people because they are not dumb, they are watching, and they are um, surely going to fulfill the seats that you are sitting in one day, and I look forward to it. Um, but one of the things that I heard from a little birdie is that city management, city managers the, um, of various departments are reading a book um, called... Um, in regards to um, um, equity, um, and they're reading it as a book club. Um, and I, I thought to myself, this book is a little advanced for folks who have not even accepted the fact that racism is a thing in our city, our county, and our state. And so um, I just wanted to make a recommendation how to be a young anti-racist is very um, elementary level and entry level, I shouldn't say elementary, but entry level according to the um, the information that's being put out. But in listening to our young people, it's extremely important that we take them wholeheartedly because there are programs like Impact by Leia Shank. Thank you for your comments. Your time is complete. Our next speaker is Zion. Thank you. Zion and then Rev. Following Zion is Rev and Samuel. Hi, sorry, it's me again. So, uh, you know, everything is good, the program, the youth program and all that, uh, but what I have problem is, is that $10 million from cannabis, from, instead of uh, getting it from the general fund, but you is taking it from the cannabis fund to build, to give it to the youth program, and instead of why not taking it from the general fund to, but the youth, the cannabis money needs to be for the black businesses like us, and instead of putting it in us, so we can actually hire the youth and train them and educate them so they can get into, uh, 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 you know, a better uh, job opportunity and business uh, creation. But instead, we actually take it from the black community and create a program that benefits everybody while our black youth is left behind. They don't have no resource center, no spaces, uh, uh, no funds to be able to get them from their, uh, where they are from the, you know, the area. Uh, and instead, we use that money to something else. So I think this is, that like, I feel this is like really, uh, that's the, the uh, systemic racism instead of putting it into our community, take it from the community. So that general fund should be funding the youth because I believe that you know the general fund is a welfare for rich companies and rich businesses. And instead of putting it into the uh, youth training and education. So I really want you to really look at, or even match it for us, the fund that has been taken from the cannabis uh, industry or cannabis taxes into the youth, why not into the businesses so we can thrive, so we can train and educate the youth so they can get into that industry. That's what I, and you know, uh, Katie Maple and I would want to thank sit you for down your comments. Our next speaker is back. Rev. Please, thank you. Is Rev? Don't see Rev Samuel. Is Rev here? Thank you. Following Rev. Samuel. Good evening, Council. Um, I'm Rev. I run Prayer and God Ministry nonprofit in the streets. It's amazing how the youth and everybody's spoken here tonight on things that I've been speaking on for the last 10 years because um, I live amongst the homeless. So I see what they're going through. I've seen them turn from the normal when they first get out there to just wilding out crazy on that fentanyl. Um, I'm out there trying to stop the violence and make peace. I'm running Homeless for Heaven community organization as well. Uh, God's Children Lives Matter. It was a Black Lives Matter thing, but it's still a bigger factor than that today. Um, also, Rev's Healing Foundation. All four nonprofits where God told me to lock it in so I can be a part of the community and grow bigger because it's just been me. I just served this community by myself, struggling in these streets, driving around a limousine that's always falling sideways, but that's my home. Um, 
but I'm out here and trying to make the difference from every community, from every district that's out here. Um, it's not one that I don't reach somebody within the community, try to help them get to uh, a constructive mindset to guide them somewhere, to help them generate different ways of getting off of the streets. Um, I'm also into the music and film industry, so the other young gentlemen that came up with here for that, um, heading to a show just this evening for that. Um, even I do them over at uh, Ms. Zion's place at Queen Sheba's. Um, so just trying to be a part of this community, I'm gonna really need help. Um, I'm gonna have to build my big team to come in here like these children did this evening so I can get you guys to hear me in a bigger voice instead of just my little bitty self. Um, because I've been doing this out of my own pocket for the last 12 years. And I really do need Sa Sacramento's help because I do know ways of stopping some of the violence. I wanna do a ride, um, let's ride together, stop dying together with the youth and give them some free rides for the little proms and stuff like that to try to get them in so I can kinda let them know where things are standing in life and how they can be a big part of this community. But I thank you, Council, for being part of who you are, and God bless you. Thank you for your comments. Next speaker is Samuel. Going Samuel is N, then O. Uh, good afternoon, Council. My name is Samuel. My pronouns are they, them. It's been a few weeks since we've all been in these chambers, so let's do a recap. It's week 18 of community members bringing to the table our list of demands that will significantly help reduce the harm, violence, murders of black, brown, poor communities in Sacramento. June 20th, OPSA conducted an audit presentation regarding the misconduct of SPD's improper use and seizures violations of citizens' Fourth Amendment rights. The following week, June 27th, the council wasted no time in voting through more money to Sacramento Police Department. July 6th, there was a community forum meeting regarding Sacramento's military use equipment, which was put on by the Sacramento Community Police Review Commission in collaboration with Sacramento Police Department. The lack of transparency in that meeting left community members feeling used as the requirement for Sacramento Police Department to get more funding for military equipment, they must meet requirements of AB 481. If community members were aware that these meetings was to set was set up in proposition for Sacramento's police department to meet AB 40 AB 81 requirements to get these funding, I wouldn't have attended, leading to more community mistrust. Our first demand states, we demand a moratorium on all military equipment purchases, no new purchases of military equipment until all lawsuits and investigations about Sacramento's police department response to George Floyd's protest, improper military equipment use, and allegations of racism tied to known hate groups are, are resolved. I believe now is a perfect time for us to reflect on what our communities could look like if we allocated funding to support the people. We must reinforce these community demands and fight fiercely to hold this city accountable to its residents. If we genuinely want to redefine what public safety means in the city, we must be willing to take, a different, to take different actions. I envision a world where we don't have the presence of police. I envision a world where cop city is never constructed. I envision a world where the Thank color of comments. my skin your time does is not complete. determine whether or not I- Thank you for your comments. Oh, Next God, speaker next. is N. Thank you for your comments, Samuel. Please take your seat. Our next speaker is N, then O. Thank you for your comments. Please take your seat. Please take your seat. Is your next your next speaker is N? Following N is O. Did you guys let the kids know today that you didn't want to spend $6.6 .6 million to possibly think of a way to reinvent public safety, that you guys denied that opportunity for the kids to have other opportunities than just cops on their streets? I didn't think so. Thank you, Samuel, for reading the first demand. We've had nine demands for 18 weeks now. So number one was we demand a moratorium on all military equipment use purchases. Number two is we demand city council approves all of the police review commission recommendations on military equipment use. 
We demand a real-time data transparency ordinance for Sacramento City. We want them to create a dashboard so the public knows who they stop, when, where, and why, and what outcome resulted. We demand, along with OPSA, an end to SACPD's use of pretextual stops. No more Terry stops of black and brown motorists. Stop SACPD from using race or ethnicity as Ill illegitimate reasons for initiating traffic stops. We demand an end to SACPD's use of unmarked cars and plainclothes police officers. No more khaki-wearing cops, polo shirt, hoodie-wearing cops, and bulletproof vests jumping out of black or silver SUVs and terrorizing our neighborhoods. We demand that SACPD dissolve its gang enforcement and problem-oriented policing teams and the task force that historically tar target our communities. We demand an end to all encampment sweeps. Stop harassing goddamn unhoused. Like, seriously, if you have nowhere to allow them to go, stop sweeping them. It doesn't make sense. We demand an end to SACPD's traffic enforcement. And lastly, we demand an end to SACPD answering all mental health calls. Today, Emmett Teal would have been 82 years old. So we stand for the last three minutes and we think of his name and the white women. Thank you for your comments. Your time is complete. Our next speaker is O. Transparency in a business or governance context refers to being open and honest. As a part of corporate governance best practices, this requires disclosure of all relevant information so that others can make informed decisions. Since week one, we have been demanding a moratorium on all military equipment purchases. Although we have been told we are not powerful enough on our own, we have persevered against the blatant discrimination, targeting microaggressions, manipulative tactics, and racism that the mayor and council have used to try and silence our voices for 18 weeks. Many of these tactics have also been used by these same nonprofits, orgs, and allies in the anti-racist movement. Every week we are shown the hypocrisy and delusions of the council in regards to how they treat their white community members compared to their black and brown constituents. But make no mistake, we are no strangers when it comes to our governing bodies inflicting implicit bias and blatant harm towards us. We are not shocked at the disrespect to our humanity and the dehumanization of our values. It is obvious which voices are centered, uplifted, and heard, and which voices are constantly denounced, expelled, and silenced. On July 6, the Sacramento Community Police Commission in collaboration with SAC PD hosted one of the first of three military equipment use conversation meetings. We attended that meeting, and as much as y'all love to talk about transparency and building community trust, you chose to compromise your police commission, an entity created by the city to keep SAC PD accountable, and use them as a scapegoat to acquire hundreds of thousands of more dollars for military equipment from the community without their knowledge. Prior to this meeting, the police commission couldn't even get a single liaison from SAC PD to show up to their meetings. When I asked SAC PD if there were any stipulations regarding how many community members needed to be in attendance to uh, for them to attain their equipment, their answer was not a requirement. There was no such requirement. They didn't need a single person in the room, and they would have got their money. They would have got their equipment no matter what. Yeah. The bare minimum. Maybe two council members posted about it at first, yeah. two to the day of. And then now you'll have a new flyer. That Thank you for your comments. Your time is complete. Our next speaker is Lambert Davis. Thank you for your comments. Your time is complete. Oh, please take your seat. Oh, please take your seat. Your time is complete. Thank you for your comments. Please take your seat. Oh, please do not disrupt the orderly conduct. Please pleading. proceed. Place your seat. Thank you. Lambert Davis. Lambert Davis. Yes, this is Lambert Davis. And I, I wanted to, to say that during the 4th of July, with all of the racist experiences I've had in the city manager's office, we still were voted number one cheesecake in Northern California during the 4th of July. I played, I played a, uh, an 18-year-old who approached me, Mayor, 
And I know you're from Northern California. You got to be proud of us considering all of the obstacles we've had to get past in the city manager's office. And Mr. Lololi, you should be contacting us. You actually said, and people in my family heard you say it, that we were the best in the United States and we haven't received one penny from District 2. And so I'm saying that it's time now for people to take us serious. There's some young people, the millennials, I talk about them a lot. They're getting ready to do a documentary on To the Bay and Back, and they're going to cover City Hall. And it's not going to be pretty for that uh, department because I have always said there's a quota system at City Hall, and it's for Caucasians and Asians. If you look at the paperwork, they get most of the money, and then the Hispanics, but blacks are always last. I'm going to challenge that, that to the Bay and Back Cheesecakes should not be last. We should be first. We're scandal-free. How many people at City Hall can say they're scandal-free? And I know you care, Mayor. You have to care that a person can weather that kind of storm and still come out on top. That's that Grant Pacer alumni in me. It's hard to to uh, deny us because we know what Thank we're up against. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Alexander, then Nate. I have two more speakers tonight. Alexander? Yes. The government has been trying to help poverty for the last century at least, and the problem has grown far worse than before welfare. We are dealing with the homeless industrial complex, throwing out billions of tax dollars, and those contractors favored by the bankers get this money, though they never fix the problems. This city council and mayor are overseeing the worst homelessness and crime problems in Sacramento history. Drugs are out of control, too. And you are busy listening to, I'm sorry to say it, but younger people lecture on this, over half the kids who graduate from Sacramento will not be able to do math, English, or writing at the 12th grade level. So you aren't giving kids the basic skills to succeed in life, but you are celebrating youth group participation. This is ridiculous lunacy. Also, what are you doing getting involved with kids anyway? Your city is a mess, and no wise parent wants you around their kids, and you're over here flattering the kids as you lead them to a life of failure and mediocrity. And when that happens, your media will be ready to holler the problem is racism and white supremacy. Stop trying to help the homeless. You keep stealing money from hardworking Sacramento citizens and putting the city deeper into debt for your constant failed programs. Homelessness is caused by the government and bankers teaming up to prevent new construction while flooding Sacramento, California, and America with immigrants mostly illegal. Why are you bringing in more citizens using precious resources when your own citizens are economically struggling. It's not rocket science. When more people move in, exceeding the housing supply, homelessness will grow uncontrollably, which is what has happened. Also, we have a crime problem, and it's in the homeless community, too. While the glaring problem of homelessness confronts the city, you keep yelling about non-existent problems like racism, anti-Semitism, Nazis, and white supremacy. Time to stop Cut lying off. to the community Cut and start off. showing racial breakdown of who is committing the rape. Yeah, Cut, Cut them off. Cut him off. Our final speaker is Nate. Thank you. Hey, can you guys hear me? We can. Yeah, I didn't have much to prepare tonight, so I just want to say, fuck the Jews, fuck the Cut him off. Hell Cut him off. Right. Done. You're done. Done. We cut him off. He's cut off. That's it. He's cut off. Okay, Councilmember Talamantes. One question from Councilmember Talamantes, and we're going to conclude the meeting. Please. Quick, quickly, Thank please. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there's 28 comments uh, in for today's council agenda in regards to Joshua's house project in front of Garden Valley Elementary. So I just want to thank members of my community for reaching out to the city council. Um, this project has been controversial in my community. Uh, the frustration is in large part because of the lack of information from the project proponents and the lack of engagement and outreach with my community. So I just have two quick questions for our assistant city manager. Can you please tell me the status of this project for everyone to know? 
So yeah, for right? okay. for ahead. status, I'll ask Assistant City Manager Michael Hasso to report out. And I think uh, Director of Community Development Tom Pace is also here to speak to this project. Thank you, um, uh, members of the council and uh, mayor. Um, so um, as, as a reminder, um, Joshua House was approved by the city council um, last year in June. That followed on the prior adoption of the siting plan, which identified the siting question as suitable for affordable housing and for this purpose. Um, to date, the project has met or is meeting the conditions of its approval. Um, Tom Pace can speak to greater detail uh, with respect to that. Uh, Mayor and Council Member Talamantes, uh, Tom Pace with Community Development. Uh, yes, the uh, project was approved last year by the City Council, um, and the team uh, in pro the proponents for Joshua's house are working on their building permits, which are um, either ready now or nearly ready to be issued. Okay. And to our City Attorney, there are many requests about breaking the contract we currently have in place with Joshua's house. Can you please address that? Um, there is no ability for the city to break the contract, council member, okay. not, not at all. Okay, so just, just for everyone's reference, in the seven months since I was elected, I've been working to foster communication with the project proponents in our community, and there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of lack of information, a lot of misinformation, and there's just a lot of work that we still have ahead of us. And so I just hope that we can bring everyone together um, that's involved in this project to, to be good neighbors moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Talamantes. Uh, we are adjourned. <laughs>